Okay. Everybody's still at Chick-fil-A. I have mine already. Okay, um, now you know that while at these, at these uh, spirit schools, we provide all this material for you, you know, the study guide and then that impartation CD. This is, this is really seriously not a gimmick, you know, and I'm, the reason I'm not charging for this is because uh, I, I didn't want to go in the ministry because of a lot of things that are being done that are not acceptable. And I want you to know that, that if I'm giving you this study guide and this CD, it's because I really, I mean 100% expect you to go through it and listen to that CD continuously and become a spiritual giant. That's the only agenda I have, nothing else. But I, I work really hard, just so you know, it takes a lot of work to do these things. And I come out with one every month. And I come out with at least one course every month. So I'm, I'm constantly working and I'm doing this for you. So remember that, that, that I'm, doing, I'm really doing this for you. I don't want to be like any other minister except for the ones that finish well. So I'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the ones that finish well. But I don't want to mess up any, at any point. I, I want to learn from those who have come before us whether I can learn from my enemy I can learn something from everybody. And I learn something from the devil every day, and he doesn't like it. But he reveals his book to me, you know, he reveals his strategy to me. So anyway, please, when I do these things, I mean, I am, I am really sincerely working hard to make these things available to you so that you can do this in a greater way than I do it. Because that's what I saw in heaven. I saw in heaven the plan I saw the intention of God, the Father's heart, for everyone. And it was surprising the discrepancy between what I saw God's intent was and then what was actually happening. And I wanted to know why there was a disconnect in ministry. So there's a lot of things that are going on that I do not agree with. And I love everyone, but I don't agree with everything. Okay? so. And even though I don't address those things all the time and, and very specific about them, I, there, is, there is a struggle inside of me constantly to keep ministry about you. There's a constant struggle in intercession for ministers to keep it about people. Because the bottom line is success is not based on statistics. It's, it's really based on fruit. So if I go on a TV show and they base my success on how many sales there were, it was surprising to me. And that's why I just backed out of a lot of things. It's because it, someone, like I have friends, I can name them, they're all daughters and sons of these men and women of God. And they are more powerful they are like more powerful than you would ever believe, but they, they didn't do well in sales. And I say, well, 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 then I'll have them on. They can come, they can, I'll interview them. This is the kind of thing. So if you write a book and it doesn't sell, that has nothing to do with your potency. And, 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 and what you're supposed, that has nothing to do with it. But it has become this kind of thing with performance. And Jesus, if you were really going to base it on char charisma, Jesus wouldn't get invited anywhere because he offended people everywhere he went. I mean, really, you either liked him or you didn't. There was no in between. And the people were like looking at him constantly, like some of you do. You try to size me up and see, is this guy really for real or whatever? And you spend your time doing that, but while you're assessing all that, you're missing what, what's, what's supposed to be delivered. And I'm just a mailman, but I actually deliver the mail. So I actually like show up. So please, 
please make me happy and really study. So when, I, when I'm here, I'm going to go off on other things that I didn't cover here because eventually this will become a book and a, a year from now. And it will contain material based on what the Spirit led me to teach on here. So I can't just teach out of this because the course, the school course, is going to have like six or seven levels. And I've only done two levels. And there's at least six more. And so when the Spirit is, is leading and guiding for someone to teach in a certain direction, it's for you. So what happens is as soon as I get here, I have everything set up. But if you notice, because of your hunger, because you're pulling on me, I don't go by this. And that's a sign. If you see me in the book a lot, it's because I'm plowing. Because the people aren't pulling on the gift, okay? So when I was at Rama, Patsy Caminetti and Keith Moore, they both taught me in class that when you're in Brother Hagin's classes, you should be praying in the Spirit and pulling off of his gift. And what would happen was is that she, she, she and him, they would both tell us, um, now, when you get to Faith Library and, and when Brother Hagin, when I go to prayer school, because I learned how to pray, praying with Brother Hagin for two years. I mean, he would, it wasn't announced, but he, they had a prayer school. And when, when somebody told me about it, there was only like 40 people there. But he would meet after class, you know, and everybody would run to go get lunch and then go work, go to work. And I would arrange it so that I would work at two, and then I would skip lunch. Because it would be better to learn how to pray with Brother Hagin than eat lunch. But I discerned that if I'm going to leave everything, I left the Air Force Academy, I left everything I wanted to do to do this, then I'm going to get, I'm going full out and I'm going to have that hunger. But we would pray in the spirit and he would say, I, I'm, he would start sharing stuff that Jesus had said that I have never read to this day in a book. He would start going into things that I have never heard him say before ever again. And there were times where he would say, don't tell the public this, this is just for you. And he would go into these, and I'm like, oh, man, that makes so much sense. Now I understand. But we would pull on that gift. And so in these, some, in these, in these spirit schools, if you pray in the spirit and you ask God, to, he will lead and guide me. Because everything I'm saying to you is I'm hearing the Lord say, say this, do this. Walk over and stand by this person and say this. Then go over here and look at this person and say this. Constantly. Thousands of pieces of information are, are processing through my spirit. Every session. Every session I'm looking at each of you and I'm blasting the devil. I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally surgically and strategically because I learn from the best. And there's no reason why when I get to heaven that Brother Hagen should say something like, well, you did exactly what I did. I want to say, I want to say I went further and I built on what he did. I want to build. So Keith, Keith Moore, Keith Moore. He was, he was just a young guy that when I registered, I had to go and pay for part of the, of the tuition. And then I went and got my books. And he was a volunteer that just was handing out the books to the students, wasn't even teaching. He just volunteered to hand out books to the students. I got this big stack of Brother Hagin's books and, and I, I didn't know who he was. Then I think the next year he, he taught he, healing, uh, the healing class. And um, in that class, I think we had a hundred and some people in there. There was 32 healings. And at the end, when before he left, he had hundreds of people being healed every semester. Just by teaching. He didn't, he didn't I, I don't remember him laying hands on anybody. He would just stand up there. And then he would teach, he would teach. And people would get healed. It would like popcorn and pop. They would just receive without any contact. Why? Because the impartation was in the room. But this is what he, he said. No, no, you, no you, I just went through four years at the Assemblies of God College up north. And then I went directly to Ramah. And it was part of that thing where it was tongues and interpretation, but it was literally 
a, a missionary from South, uh, Central America who understood what I was saying in tongues. And he told me, this is what you're saying in spirit. You're supposed to go to a school named Rama in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that's what you're saying. And you're actually late by about a week. We got to get you to the bus station. I'm not, I kid you not. That has happened up here. It's a six minute flight to Springfield. I don't know what it is when you walk or whatever you all do. <laughs> but I don't drive. I, I fly. But this is, this, this really happened. This guy's in tears. He goes, you're speaking my dialect, even the dialect. He goes, you're fluent. In fact, you use this word instead of this word. He said, this is what the Spirit's saying. Understand that going to, this is what the Spirit was saying through me. Understand that this school will lead you into abundant life. And so I got on a bus that next morning. It was 3 a.m. That was the one, and they only had one seat left. So I bought it. I spent all the money I had. It was $30. I had $30 for trailways or whatever it was. Sat by someone else. It's three in the morning. One seat left. And the young lady says to me, well, why are you going to Tulsa? I said, well, I'm going to Rama." She goes, well, I'm a second year student. Do you need any help? I said, oh, yeah, I do. I do. So she was able to help me when I got there. And the Lord did some mighty miracles because this missionary who was rooming across from me at the Assemblies of God College understood my tongues and heard me and was telling me what I was saying. Well, this is outlandish to most people. It was very detailed. He said, the Spirit's seeing that you will be there tomorrow, and by 5 o'clock, you will have a place to stay, and you will have a job. And you will, I wasn't even accepted yet. Did I mention that? <laughs> I wasn't even accepted to Rama yet. They hadn't gotten back to me, and there was, it's just like a month away. I got my acceptance letter a month before. He said, you're going to have a job by 5 o'clock. That's what the Spirit's saying. And you have a, you're going to have a place to stay. So when I got there, I remember a, 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 guy, a guy who's a missionary in France. But I used to help him with contracting in the summers when I was at the assemblies. They would shut, they would, I would do summer school. But to make extra money, I could, I could work as a, in a contracting with houses and make a lot of money just on a, a few days, on all the holidays and stuff like that. So they would pay me an exorbitant amount of money, and this guy, this guy was uh, in Tulsa. So I called him. I said, hey, I'm in town. He goes, this is what he said. He said, me and my wife, the Spirit told us that you're going to move here. We've been expecting you to call us. Do you need a job? And I kid you not, I was at work at 5 o'clock working for his company. And, I, and he said, why don't you just stay at my house? And he said, we got an extra car. And that was the other thing that was said by the Spirit. So within 24 hours, all this stuff happened. But it was like a, a flash of information that I did not know that when I was supposed to, to go to my next step. So I just tell you that before I start because I'm really serious about all this. But Keith Moore, when he talked to class, one day he got into this thing. He goes, yeah, I became a pilot. He said, I had real low hours, but I want to be a pilot. He said, somebody gave me an airplane. And he said, I had to go get a, a, a rating in it. And you just don't do that. You, you can't just walk in and fly these airplanes, these jets. You can't, you just, it doesn't matter. It's just, there are things that are common, like they go really fast and really high. But besides that, there's, everything's different in every airplane. So it's not like you can just walk in, and it's not like you can borrow somebody's car. You just don't do it, okay? It's very, very difficult to make a transition, especially with, with uh, his situation where he was low time, low hours, not any experience like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling the story for him, and I haven't, I've never really met him. But he said this, he said the Lord had instructed him he's going to be a pilot and somebody gave him a jet so he had to go get a rating in it in order to fly it and it's really hard to do that it's really hard to just walk in and get a rating in something and it's almost like 
um, because of the responsibility, it, it wouldn't be fair for, for people to just pass all the time. It's, it's almost like you feel like you're going to fail up until you pass. And this is kind of the story he told in class. And I'm thinking, I just gave up all this, and then he's getting it back. And I'm thinking, this is really cool. It didn't even enter me that, that, like, that he, God could still do a miracle at the very end. So anyway, he went through it, and he said they threw every emergency like they do. And I just went through that a couple weeks ago. And they throw everything at you and see if you're still going to be able to handle it. And it just, it just piles up, you know. And you have to just learn from your training to where it becomes custom. So he's talking about that and how they were, you know, we lost an engine and then, you know, this. And then um, anyway, he passed and he became a pilot and he has, he has jets, you know. And it, as a young man, 25 years old, it went into me and it just, it just stayed there for 40 years. 30 some years, 35 years. It just stayed with me all the time that, hey, listen, you know, he was saying like how hard it was and like he didn't think he would, you know, there, and there were scenarios that we've been put into. Uh, me and Lou, Lou was my first officer to get my captain's rating. So Lou was in there with me and he just did what I told him. And he was, he was really good. I mean, but I'm not comfortable. Think about it. I'm, he's been my mentor for a year and now I'm telling him what to do, but that's the way he has to be. So we're like, we're like in scenarios and I'm like, I told, I said, Lou, I said, was there really any way out of that? <laughs> and I asked the instructor. He goes, well, you know, we have scenarios where there is no way out. But it really cooks you because you're like trying to stay alive in an situ emergency situ situation. And it's just like this. I mean, you only have a second or two to react or else it's over, you know. And, and I remember Keith telling us that. And how he was saying you have to really be, be able to stay in the spirit and know what you're doing and become confident in what the Lord is doing and saying. So as I'm in the simulator, and then after we were done, I, I went, we went, me and Lou went back and we sat there in front of the, inspe the uh, inspector, the examiner, and um, he just starts talking about, okay, we're going to sign this and that, and then I knew I passed, you know, <laughs> like up until then, I was like, but he, he said, okay, you know, we're going to go sign this, I'm going to take some pictures, and congratulations, and all I could think about was Keith Moore being a volunteer handing out books to the Rayma students, and then he became an instructor, and then I found out that he went and got his rating, and he got it with real low hours, and it was the same parallel, exactly how it happened with me, and, and I realized that that ministry should be about example and like God doing things through people. And then you look at that and say, well, if, they, if God can do that for them, he can do it for me because that's how it happened with me. Okay, so getting back to the prayer school, Brother Hagen would get on his knees. He would talk and then he would start praying in the spirit and Patsy and Keith. And... They would speak in tongues, and then I'd hear Brother Hagin go, okay, Lord, we'll do that, but when do you want us to do that? He goes, two years from now? Okay, two years from now. He goes, okay, what about this? Start praying in tongues again. And then, yeah, but what about China? I mean, this is back in 87, and we're interceding for China in 86 and 87 all the time. It just kept coming up, Patsy. Everybody would just say stuff and then go back into tongues, all about China. And it was interesting because if you look back at the older stuff, it was about the Iron Curtain with Brother Hagen. And then that stopped because that went away. And then in the 80s, we're praying about China in prayer school. Okay, so, these, everything I do for you is forward looking because it's very important. Like understanding praying in the spirit and, and interpreting tongues and knowing what the spirit saying is very important. However, the mistake that's been made is it makes it look like certain things are just for the fivefold ministry and it's not. It's not just for the fivefold. There are lots of things in the Bible that are for the believer and we can't keep pushing the responsibility onto the fivefold because, and I just discussed this. I just discussed this with Brother Hagin's daughter because I don't believe that Brother Hagin ever wanted it to be where the fivefold was up here. 
But they should be the servant of all. And when I, you know, when I went to Southwest Airlines, I just want you to know that that was just as much the part of the preparation for the ministry as college was and Bible school, because I learned how to serve people. And I learned how to be in uncomfortable situations all the time and get blamed for everything and still smile and be nice. <laughs> and there was a thousand ways. When I would go to work, listen, uh, listen to me and, and hear it. There were a thousand and one ways to get fired at my job. And there was only two ways to keep my job. One of them was show up and the other one was don't be drunk. So I could do both of those. But a thousand ways to get fired. I mean, it was like walking on eggshells all the time. Okay, so my question to you by the Spirit, by the Spirit, I said that all to set you up, is why would you want to spend time with people that you feel like you have to be on eggshells with them all the time? Gotcha, didn't I? That's what the Spirit's saying this afternoon. Why would you waste your time with people that are always right? Why would you want to do that and be on eggshells all the time? Let them be wrong. Walk away. I'm telling you by the Spirit. You got to cut the ties with the boat anchors. It's time to cruise. You can feel the Spirit, can't you? Did you feel this shift? I know that was a sneeze, but it was very powerful. I was, I was studying, I studied every uh, revival, every person. It took a couple of years, but I studied every move of God, every person I could find, every dog even that was involved with a move of God. I mean, I, I, just, I just, I thought, I think I got everybody. But there was one time where someone had a broken leg and they had a cast on it and somebody got up because they were leaving the service and they stepped over and tripped over the guy with the cast on and the guy let out a yell and revival broke out. <laughs> because they thought somebody was getting hit by God. So there's got to be a catalyst, and sometimes it's, it's stuff like that. But anyway, um, there's a catalyst for the move of God. Okay, so how do, we, how, do we, how do we bring in what's already happening around us? Like the, the multitude of the, of the angels, the ministering spirits that are here, just in this building alone, um, the, the, the angelic help that is right there available to you all the time, and they, they don't... They don't want to be visible because they don't want to get credit. They want, to God, they want God to get the credit for everything. So they, they operate in secret. So it's really not, it's really, uh, it's really neutral activity to ask for angel visitation because you already have it. Plus, they're not going to show themselves to you because that, that's their, their mode of operation. Now... If you want to see angelic ac activity, though, you just do the things that cause angels to act. So if you want to see demonic activity, just do everything opposite to what they want. If you want to see demonic, if you want to see manifestations of the devil, do everything that they don't want you to do. And they will blow up. They will not be able to stay silent. They'll start to mouth off. They'll start to manifest. Why? Because they're ineffective. If they feel ineffective, they, they'll blow their cover because they're leaving. They'll throw a fit. Okay, so you do everything opposite. But if you want angel activity, they have been sent to minister for those who are going to inherit salvation, not to those the idea is that they already are taking care of you. There's another step that the body of Christ hasn't even entered into, and that's ministering with angels. They are sent to minister, it says, for those who are going to inherit salvation. Oh yeah, click, click. Some of you need to click your heels and say there's no place like home. Because what happens is, is that you didn't notice that angels already 
are going to take care of you because the Father's taking care of you. He's going to provide for you exceedingly above what you can ask or think. He's going to provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. That has already been established as his word. Now, how he does that is totally up to him. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. You're going to be provided for exceedingly above what you ever can ask or think. It's going to be out of his riches in glory. He's going to transfer it down to here. He has everything you need for life and godliness. In fact, it's already in you, according to Paul. Everything you need is already in you. Okay, that's better than being beside you. So you have to get out of this mode that you have to have angels doing things because they already are doing things. But what they're waiting for is for the deputy sheriff to give a command. That's you. You're the one in authority. So everybody thinks that men and women of God are born in a manger with a halo and shepherds visiting. But see, ministers that are actually still alive, <laughs> they are still alive because they had the will to cooperate no matter what. They would not give up. Any minister that's still alive is because they willed to live. And they were proven. And God extends people's lives out because they've been faithful. And so you have ministers that are still here. that are actually the crossover to the next generation. And they are life like Billy Brim. She, her life is being extended out right now. The Lord told me this. I haven't even told her this. But her life is actually being extended out so that she can reach and hand a torch and until those who are under her are ready to carry it, she will continue to live. And her life is being extended out. The Lord told me that. Okay, so there's people that stay alive and are examples, and you can get impartation from her and from these people that are still alive. They're extended out past what would be normal. So why would you want to spend time where you, with people that you have to be on eggshells with, with? Why don't you just hook up with people that are literally being hung in the, they're, they're, being, they're hanging around because the, in, the handoff is being done. I got the handoff in prayer school. I've never met Keith Moore, but he changed my life. And when the Lord said, he said to me, I... My pastor, I was assistant pastor, and it was in, Pastor Randy, when was that? 2001, two, three. He walked into my house, and he said to me, the Lord said, this house is going to be paid off. From that day, seven years later, someone paid our house off. It took seven years. He said, also, you're going to get a jet. I said, I don't want a jet. I gave that all up. That was in 2003, four, whatever. Our house was paid off. And then last year, the Lord said, you better go get training because your jet's coming. I go, it's okay. I don't need a jet. Oh, he said, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a jet. So I went to training. I flew, I flew 20 hours in a single engine airplane in one week, went and got my multi-engine rating the next week. The jet was literally sitting in a hangar already. Couldn't fly it yet. A year later, I became a captain in that jet. But see, it was an impartation from a guy named Keith Moore who just told a story in class. Do you get it? There's still people that are alive that are carrying this. Every time that I would feel like I couldn't, I was working sometimes three jobs when I was at Rama. 
when I felt like I couldn't go to something that was extra, like a seminar, Brother Hagen's doing this or that, I would make myself go. You want to know why? Because the Spirit of the Lord say, you're not going to always have him. You're going to wish you went to everything. So I would make myself go. And I would sit there knowing that my future was based on what I got from on a handoff. <laughs> so really this room is an activation room because it's a sum of many, many people who have invested in me. Jesus himself, when he spoke to me, he never once limited me. Not once did he tell me I can't do something. He always told me that no one was limiting me up here. He said, everybody up here loves you. Everybody believes in you. Not one person up here doubts you. He says, you're known in heaven. Jesus told me, he says, you're known in heaven. I was 31 years old when he appeared to me on that operating table. He said, you have done everything I've ever asked you to do. I go, I'm 31 years old. How much could that be? He said, it's not, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. He said, you drop everything when I speak to you and you go do it. Doesn't matter how much it costs you. He said, that is very rare on the earth. He said, you, you, everyone in heaven knows you. And he, and he said, I'm going to teach you how to live successfully in this realm. And he spent 45 minutes doing that. And that's in my first book. And if you can't afford it, just go and get one. I went through the seven different things that, that he taught me there about operating in this realm. But it's interesting to me that he sent me to Southwest Airlines for 30 years, not as a pilot, to serve Cokes and Sprites. And I learned how to love people that weren't lovable. Not you, not you but you guys were okay. But, <laughs> but there were passengers, you know. I remember the time I, I, I smelled a snake on the airplane. I smell a snake. I, I can smell that guy when he's around. The serpent, there was a serpent on the airplane. So I'm getting off, I'm getting, I got the orders for the flight tents and the pilots, I'm going to get their food. And I run off and I go by this guy and he pulls a snake out. It's wrapped around him, he was on my flight and he had that snake the whole time. I guess that's his comfort animal. <laughs> so, you know, I guess you can bring anything on. As long as, it, you know, you call it a comfort animal, you get a doctor to sign it. Get, get your pet tarantula and bring it, you know. But anyway, I smelt that snake. And I could sense for the last several years that the body of Christ had been infiltrated, which doesn't even seem possible. But it had to do with wrong information. It had to do with not processing things correctly. And, and this is the bottom line of what, when I met Jesus, uh, this is what, what happened to me. I realized that he knows everything and I know nothing. And that everything he says is correct and that's the way it's gonna be. And everything that I think and say, it doesn't really mean that much unless I'm repeating what he's already said and then I'm a hero. If I repeat him, if I refer to him, if I always look to him as being my source, everything's fine. But if I think I know better in any operation of the spirit, it's just a matter of time when my feet are where my head was a second ago, because I'm gonna be humbled. Okay, but what happens if things, the operation of the Holy Spirit is not taught correctly, then when we get into situations where we're supposed to operate correctly, we cannot because of our training. Our training was not correct. Okay, so when I was under these people, I learned how to pray correctly. I learned how the Spirit wants to initiate things and that we are supposed to be the ambassador or the, the person who implements it. So we are the manifestation. You see, we are always waiting for the Holy Spirit to manifest, but you don't understand. 
I will never cease to be Kevin, ever. I will always be Kevin. I will always be loved by God. If I choose not to serve God and go to hell, I will always be Kevin. And I will always be loved by my Father God. But if I choose to walk away and work against God, that's my choice. This is what I learned in heaven. And this is what is not understood in the body of Christ. And so there's been this infiltration in the mentality that is where the warfare is. The warfare is in our mind. Okay, so all of you, you know that when you pray that God hears you in your heart, you know that he hears you and you know that he's going to answer you and he's already working on it right now. And you already know that if it's in the word of God, it's yours. So you don't really have to ask for it. And there's a command that comes, there's a command that comes from your spirit that starts to fight your mind and you start freaking out. And this will get you kicked out of church. So if you want to get kicked out of church, just start talking about the divine nature that Peter talked about in, first, in Second Peter chapter 1, that we are partakers of the divine nature. Because see, the partaking of the divine nature means that there are things that you do not request. It's actually forbidden. You demand. So if you want to get kicked out of church tomorrow morning, just place a demand on the covenant. You see, I I've, I've very rarely, I, I don't pray for myself at all. The only thing I pray is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23. It's the only pray, prayer I pray. I'm in the vine, so I don't have to pray for that. I don't have to pray to, for, for God to talk to me. I don't have to pray for him to provide for me. I never pray for money. I never have ever prayed for money. You want to know why? Because in 1980, when I gave my life to the Lord in that Assemblies of God church, it was a gospel tabernacle in Lower Borough, Pennsylvania. I had already given my life to the Lord, but the Lord told me to do it publicly, so I just went to the, the Yellow Pages, and I found somebody who believed in speaking in tongues and the salvation message, and that was the only church I could find in my city. So I went there. When they gave the altar call, I went up and I gave my life to the Lord publicly, and I had a check in my hand. Now, everybody listen to me, because I don't want you to ever misunderstand warrior notes about money. I don't focus on the things that are already mine. Every, every dime on this earth that is earmarked for warrior notes is coming to me. It doesn't matter if I manipulate or talk about it or give offerings or take offerings. It doesn't matter if you give. I'm still coming back even if you don't give. Why? Because I'm sent. He finances it. Okay, but I had a check. It was the exact amount to the penny of my, as a teenager, it was everything that I had. It was my whole bank account. It was $313. I wrote a check and I put it in the basket and this is what I said to God. I said, I will never have to worry about money ever again because you have it all. That's exactly what I said. And I walked out of that building and I didn't go back there anymore. Okay, so if God has sent you to do something, whether it's, it's start a business or whatever it is that you're called to do, a ministry, if he sent you, he finances you. Now, what, what soldier would have to be sent to war at his own expense? I'm quoting scripture. What soldier would have to pay his way for, to go to war? I will never have to worry about money again, ever. This is not pride. This is because I know that he has everything I need for life and godliness, and he will give me everything I need and exceedingly above whatever I could ask or think. So, I can tell you that even though my pastor said you're going to get a jet, even though Keith Ellis, when I called Keith Ellis to check in with him, he said, oh, by the way, you're getting a jet. He said, it's, it's, it's just a couple weeks away. And sure enough, it was a couple weeks away, just like always. So what Kathy and I did, 
I'm just telling you because I, the Lord told me to talk about Billy Brim in this session. I, she's not here. She would normally be here, but she's not here right now. But we got an invitation to call her and talk with her. So we, we connected with her. And I told Kathy, I said, if we're getting a jet, I want to sew into hers. I want to sew into her aviation department. And so that's what we did. So it wasn't enough that the word of the Lord was, I'm getting a jet. Because it doesn't matter whether I get one or not. Southwest has a thousand of them. I'll pay my 69 bucks and, and tolerate the peanuts, which they don't even give out now. The, the important thing is to get here. But they only land here by accident, I guess. They don't actually do it. Okay. <laughs> you know about that, right? Yeah. You can land, but you can't take off, you know. But anyway, <laughs> I had to propel this. So I started acting like Brother Hagen. Oh, yeah, Lord, I'll do that. Yes, Lord, okay. So when I would get a, when I pray in the spirit, I would feel this, this burst inside my spirit. And I would, I would sense that it's in a certain direction. So, okay, yes, Lord, just show me more about that. Okay, what about that? Well, I don't know what that is. I just saw Brother Hagen do it. But I could feel the burst in my spirit. That means revelation has come. That has not come by the origin of man. That came by the Holy Spirit. See, we don't understand the operation of the Spirit. And we're not humble enough to know that we're nothing without Him. We're nothing without Him. If He doesn't blow into our sails, we're just dead in the water. But, you know, it takes sometimes a whole lifetime and a whole bunch of bruises and injuries to figure this out. Or you could just be smart and just take it from somebody that's already been through it. And that's why you got to hook up with people that love you and care about your spiritual situation and want to, your spiritual growth. Okay, so the Spirit of God would ignite my spirit, but I wouldn't know in my mind what was going on. But I knew it was in a certain direction. So it happens. So now, like right now, I'm in front of Ryan, and my spirit's being activated about his son, Andrew, right now. I mean, this is like, I'm not making this up. So when I get in front of somebody, whatever is like at the top of the list for that person, it comes right up. Okay, so I know by the spirit that, that God is focusing on his son. Now, this is, happens every couple weeks, and I'll call him and say, the Lord just told me this. Tell Andrew this. You know, okay, so, you know, you go over here to Lou, and I remember Lou, when, when I got the airplane, when I bought the airplane, it, it was actually being flown by Lou and by Sven. Sven owned it, and, and they were flying it. So Lou flew my airplane. It was like the first one off, the Embraer assembly line. It was number four. The first three were test beds. So ours was the first one that was actually out. So Lou here flew that for years. Okay, so when they delivered it to me, Sven delivered it. And I started to, sh the power of God was in, in the airplane as we're sitting in there. I said, yeah, just go ahead and send the paperwork. Kathy and I, we know it's right. He goes, well, tell me about this, you, you had this, you had this, something happened with you with the Lord? And I go, yeah. He goes, well, he, he started, Sven started talking to me. He goes, well, I had, I fly John Maxwell around. And he's talked to me. And he goes, and then um, these guys, uh, the are nots You know, he wants, he, he, he said, grab your, grab your, he said, I, I put my hands out and they touched my hands and the power of God hit me. He said, I've never felt anything. He says, I, so I know about this stuff, but I don't understand. And so I sat there. We sat there, didn't talk about the airplane. Me and Kathy sat there and talked about heaven. And he goes, can I have a, a signed book? I go, yeah, you can have a signed book. I'll take the airplane. You can have the signed book, you know. <laughs> and God started moving. And the next thing you know, Sven says to me, well, what do, what, do you, what do you need as far as training? I go, I need everything. I go, he goes, well, you got to go to school 
like next week, and I talked to Louie, he goes, you gotta get that multi-engine rating. I go, okay. He goes, just go to a school, they don't call it a crash course, because that would be not good to say. <laughs> but <laughs> they, 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 they do like a year's worth of work in like 12 days. And so they, they beat it into you so that you can pass. So after like 12 days of just flying this airplane, and then they stick me with the, the FAA guy. And I met the FAA guy, and I'm all nervous, because I haven't flown in like 17 years. So in a week, I learned how to, how to do all this again and then went to this rating, which is not that easy for me anyway. And I'm all nervous. So I was sitting down with this guy, and he's looking at me, and he goes, um, so what do you do? And how did you get a jet? You got a phenom? And he, he works for uh, UPS, I believe, flies a 767 but he's an FAA guy. So I said, well, I have a ministry, and um, I, I died on the operating table, and um, <laughs> I did, I, t I told him. This is, the de this is the briefing before, you know, the check ride. So it's a two hour oral, oral testing, and if you pass that, then you go fly. And you know, you, you just wanna pass the oral, and then you have to go and do this, and then you, just, you die three or four times during that, you know? And so it's like this five hour deal. He goes, so you had a near-death experience? I go, yeah, but that won't happen here. You're fine. <laughs> but this is the thing. This is the thing. He goes, this is interesting. He said, I have, been felt, I have felt led to study about this, and I'm a Christian. And he said, I just read two books on near-death experiences, and I want to read yours. So it went from that, I passed, I went back to the jet. And Lou had to fly with me one time because Sven had something else to do. So I got to meet Lou. So Sven says, you know, we're going to take care of you. He said, I'm an instructor. I literally developed the program for the phenom for the training that you'll have to go through. And Lou is part of the administration. So he, so he, he would be good to be there too. He's written some of the manuals. We've all worked on this program and we all worked there together. So we know the airplane and we helped develop the whole program for the phenom 300. And I'm like, you got, you can't plan this. So Lou, Lou, Lou flew with me and, and he, he said, you know, my boss, he said, I took him from not like this to this in a very short amount of time. And I, I remember I said, I turned to Lou, I said, can you do that for me? He goes, well, you're gonna have to fly a lot. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a tough curve. I said, I can do it. So we started to train. Now, so, what, so when, this is what Lou, then, then Lou caught it. This is what I wanna say. Lou caught it the next time I, had a, I, I flew with him. So I had to fly with different people that were all instructors. So they, they let me fly captain, but they were instructing me to be a captain. So for a whole year, I was flying captain, but on my days off, I would fly as a first officer for a charter. I would learn both sides of it. But the next time I remember Lou, Lou, when you came, he said, my sole goal is to make you a captain. And when he said that, the power of God hit me. See, now he caught the vision that was the vision. He became part of the process now. He was no longer just a, a standby. And so within this year, we flew together, we quizzed, we got everything in line, and then he came and spent that time in the training with me and was my first officer on all the check rides and all the training. And I passed. All because others adopted what God was doing, became part of it. So it's not just the word that's delivered to you, it's that implementation of everybody around you that's part of it. 
And this is what was missing. And this is what was the infiltration that happened in the body of Christ to where we were going from seminar to seminar. And I call it seminar because I, 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 dis, I, I, I wanted to distinguish as being a spirit school and a healing school and a prayer school because it mentions the agenda. It mentions the vision and where we're going. Everything that the Spirit is wanting to do for you has to do with everyone around you as well. So you receive a word, but if everyone is unfaithful around you, it's going to be, it's tough. So I'm constantly, like I work with my staff and I call them and I talk to them and I'm always telling them my vision, always saying what the Lord's saying and telling them this is conditional because if these people do not come in line, then we're going to have to go here. We're going to have to do this city because this person's not, 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 uh, they're not, they're not there. They're not there. Okay. I want to talk about that. That was my introduction. I want to talk about this. Why do you feel com uncomfortable around certain people? Why don't you look inside yourself and be honest? Where are you going? Know your destination and find out if they're going there. Because if they're not going there, there's going to be a split. Now, you can take it out to the woodshed and put it to death now, or you can wait until you get hurt. Can you believe I just said that? Maybe you just need to take it hunting. And then you come back. Now listen to me. I'm, to, I'm speaking by the Spirit. It's time to cut. It's time to cut the anchors. <laughs> Why are we in the harbor? With our umbrella drink. Non-alcoholic, of course. But... <laughs> Why are we, what, what did the harbor resting, did it prepare us for the last two years? Okay, you all are still alive. You all are reasonably happy, smiling. But this was very hard. But how much of you was hanging outside the ride? Keep your hands in the ride. Stay streamlined through adversity. You cannot do that with numbskulls around you. I'm telling you, where are you going? You've got to determine what the Lord's telling you. That's why you, the migration, I was warned about this. I, as soon as that visitation happened, I went to Kathy. I said, there's a migration happening from now on. And, and I told my staff, it was a five-hour visitation at night. He went through everything that we're doing right now. It was all preemptive. Didn't understand it, but I did it. We started to do things that were preemptive. And now, just like Noah, Noah became a hero. But he was really silly building a boat until it started raining. And then everybody was like, this guy's pretty smart. Okay. This is the operation of the Spirit. I'm speaking by the Spirit now. I'm telling you. You've got to know the next 20 moves. They're already, the, the steps of a righteous man, it says ordered by the Lord. They're actually numbered in sequence by the Lord. The steps of a righteous person are ordered or numbered can you follow a sequence? We'll just put one foot in front of the other. Sing it as a song, like they do at Christmas time on the cartoons. Put one foot in front of the other, Chris Kringle or whatever his name is. You can do this. It's one step at a time, but you've got to know where you're going. Where you're going is, you're, go you're going to a debt-free lifestyle. You're going to a healthy lifestyle. Your body is being healed. 
and your body is being transformed. Your mind is being transformed. Your spirit is transformed. Your, your migrate, there's a migration that is, is, that is already happening. And I told my wife, I said, the migration has started. And I said, Jesus told me, I mean, he, I could go and take you where he sat with me. And it was as real as this right here. And he sat and went, I never talked. I never said a word for five hours. He spoke and spoke and spoke and spoke. And this is what he said. He said, you're about to lose a lot of friends. I go, good news or bad news? He said, many will leave you. I will bring others, but it will not replace the number that you will lose. But I'm with you. He said, you have to do this, and you have to do this now. You have to start the homeschooling. You have to start all of the departments that we're starting. You have to start the music school. You have to start the prayer school and the healing school. You have to go to the people. You have to start warrior fellowships. So we did. We launched them the next year. And, and we, we launched, I think, 1,200 the first month. And then it's up to 1,600. We could have more, but we just, it's just too much to manage all those churches in all these different countries. So it, it's a lot of emails. Okay, so all the students, I mean, theoretically, all 28,000 students should be doing a Bible study every week. But it's going to take a lot of people to help with that. And we just don't have that right now. And I just don't take people on just to fill spots. They've got to be family. They've got to be tested. And they've got to be standing after a storm, smiling. There's only, they don't make people like that anymore, you know. They don't make people like they used to, you know. So there's got to be a testing and a trying in order to survive a storm. But I'm not just surviving. I'm thriving in this. Why? Because I'm sent, not went. Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side. That's why he slept on the way over during the storm, because he was told by his father to cross. He never did anything unless he was told. So when the father said, go to the other side, he said, let us cross over to the other side. So of course he could sleep during turbulence. But the disciples did not have that relationship. So they became anchors. And he, they, he said, how long will I be with you? He was so frustrated constantly because he only had three and a half years to impart what was on him to them. And then he was leaving. So whatever they got, that was it. That's all that was left. So he had to, so he was constantly like, how long am I going to be with you? In other words, you got to get this because I'm not always going to be here. He, they had to learn how to operate under the same power that he was operating under, which he was submitted to the Holy Spirit. See, we don't understand that. We think he was, he was the son of God, which he was, but he wouldn't want anyone. He always even told the demons to shut up when they called him the son of God. He wanted to be known as a son of man. Why? Because legally, if he did anything on this earth as a son of God, except the replacement for our sins, if he did any of the miracles as a son of God, then he couldn't say, you're going to do the same things and even greater. He couldn't say that if he had done it by the son of God. That was the temptation in the desert. See, we've been misinformed. We don't understand that the legalities of what happened here. Jesus had to operate under the Holy Spirit as a servant, he considered being equal with God as nothing, not being comprehended, but became a servant. He did that so that he could hand it off to us legally. Now, come on now. You can see this. So if the disciples adopted the mission and understood what was happening, then they could carry it and it would be fast like this last year. This last year for me was beyond what I could do. And I remember when I passed that check ride for the multi engine, my instructor was there. And I got out of the airplane 
and he, he, went, he went like this, because he, did, he didn't approach because the FAA guy's there. He went staying back, you know. He goes, did you pass? <laughs> and I go. <laughs> and they started dancing, <laughs> twirling. And I said, I said, let's get out of here before he changes his mind. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> okay. This is not how Jesus structured it, is to barely make it. He, he, he did this all, and he said, he, he addressed Satan. It was a legitimate, it was a legitimate temptation in the desert. If you are the son of God, turn this into bread. Well, Jesus told me personally, he says, when he said that to me, he said, I was thinking of the day that I made him, I created him. Well, I'll put it in his perspective. If you are the son of God, do this, do this, do this. That was the temptation. He wasn't, he wasn't supposed to do it as a son of God. He had to do it by the spirit. And the spirit wasn't doing that. Man lives by what, come, what comes out of the mouth of God, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He doesn't live on bread alone. In other words, the Spirit wasn't doing that miracle. Are you all getting this or no? <laughs> this, it's as the Spirit wills. It's not a show, but it became a show. Come on now. And everybody's like, okay, go to this person. I want to get a word. Are you going to this person? You know, I want to get a word. I'm like, I'll give you a word. Repent. <laughs> I did. I would say that. All my friends like, oh, so-and-so is in town. Are you going to go? I go, no, I'm not going. He goes, well, don't you want a word? I go, and I'm thinking about, I just gave that person a word like six months ago, and they haven't done anything with it. And that's what you do. You start going from word to word. And, and you're in the harbor. It's time to cut it. It's time to get back out there. And, and how we do that is we take what was given to us by people that are still alive and have been walking with God for 40 years and 50 years. You know, you heard the pilot say, 50 years, 40 years of flying. It's the perfect scenario for me to play catch up and get to where I need to be in aviation. Well, it's the same way with you. You have all these people that have plowed and have gotten impartations from others, and there's a handoff, and it's extended out. Right now, there are people living way longer because God is working with the body to get us caught up. So while you're focusing on this or that, God is looking at your future because he's standing in it. And he's wanting you to settle into your destiny, which has to do with who you are, not what you do. Now, I understand works. I understand manifestation and fruit. But you got you to gotta get this. You're putting it in the wrong order. This isn't about performance. And you can't please God any more than he's already pleased with you. It, it, Jesus' blood was off the charts much more than you can impress him with. Positionally, it's taken care of. Now, relationship-wise, the works that you do are because you love God. Like any amount of money that you give to anything, anybody, you're giving it to the Lord, but you're doing it because you love God. It's worship. It's not going to make God look at you any differently. Why do you think that you have to give gifts to make somebody love you? You see, we're, in the, we're caught in this. We're trapped. And our whole life is trying to get people to like us and accept us. Well, you get over it. Because the bottom line is, is you're rejected by the world. Jesus already told us that, but you had to find out for yourself. So now you're trying to fit in that, that, you know, you're a square peg in a round hole, and you don't know why you don't fit. I don't fit in. Well, congratulations. Jesus mentioned this like 2,000 years ago. But see, it didn't take root because you in your heart want to please. 
But see, the only person that you need to please is God himself. But positionally, he's, he's already pleased with you because of the blood. Relationship wise, you seek God diligently. And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Enoch pleased God so much that God took him. The verse before, when he talks about Enoch, it's in conjunction with seeking God diligently and him rewarding you for it. It's in the same thought process in, in Hebrews chapter 11. Enoch's key was that he sought God. He feared God. He walked before him in holiness. He was set apart. Being different, I'm not different in heaven. I was God's normal. But down here, I'm an anomaly. And people can't figure it out. They're trying to reverse engineer me. They're, they're hiring. They hire companies to try to figure out the success. I'm serious. Instead of understanding the operation of the Spirit, that the relationship produces fruit. So why do you do anything? Your motivation has to be because you love God, not that you're trying to get God to love you. You are accepted in the beloved. According to Romans 8.15, I know it's still in there, I just saw it. Romans 8.15 says there's a spirit of adoption. That word in Aramaic is full acceptance. The spirit of full acceptance. So we have been compromised in the body of Christ because we cannot receive from our Father God properly. We think we have to be something else in order to operate when we already are sons. The only qualification that is the simplest way to do it is John 1.12. John 1.12 says those who listen to him or attach themselves to his teachings, talking about Jesus, those who embraced him, he gave those people the power to become sons of God. Okay, that word is the word for authority. It's not the word for power, like dunamis power. It's not dunamis. It's the word for authority. He gave them the authority to be sons of God, children of God. Authority is imparted. There's no work involved. We got big police officers around here, but really the authority that they've been given, it could, they could weigh 110 pounds. It would matter their weight. It's the badge. It's who's behind him that is the authority. So if you wanna find out, I wouldn't. You wanna test your boundaries and find out what's really behind him? But see, we think that it has to be physical manifestation or size or this kind of results. But all of you, you could write a book. It could be straight from heaven and not even sell. Sell. And it's straight from, I mean, and it really, really, to be honest with you, I look at all my heroes on Amazon and I'm looking at all these authors that I've read every one of their, I mean, all these people, and my picture is pasted right amongst them now. And I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and I look, I look 
And I'm like, there's Brother Hagen's book. And there's my book. How did that happen? Okay, it's impartation. And if you talk to him in heaven, he would want me to exceed him. Because Jesus wanted you to exceed him. Jesus wanted you to do greater works. So anybody in heaven would want you to excel beyond your mentor. It would only seem correct because each generation is a progression and there's a plan for the ages that's been revealed. If you read Paul, the mystery has been revealed. And that through the church, the glorious, the glorious gospel will be preached. And it is a judgment. It is literally an announcement to the powers in the air. It is their pending judgment for us to even be here right now, displaying the glory of God. We're literally pronouncing judgment on the heavenlies right now by the church being here. So at what point do you let go of those people and just let them be wrong? Let them start their own school on how to be wrong and have their own YouTube channel. Three steps to be wrong. In other words, just let them go because their opinion doesn't count in heaven because God has already voted for you. He's already pleased with you. He has already announced your succession, your success, your, your expected end. But it's expected end. So now, do you understand prophecy a little better? Prophets have to speak the truth even if it doesn't come to pass. They still have to speak the truth. They're calling the things that are not as though they were. But the body has to agree because in the New Testament, we do everything through faith. And that's by love. Love is the greatest, but it's through faith that all those people obtain the promises. Okay, so for you to obtain a promise that is announced through a prophecy, you have to do what Paul told Timothy. This is not being taught. And so we have been injured and compromised for years. Paul told Timothy, wage war with the prophecies you've received. Okay, if it was in stone and Paul spoke it and he's a prophet, well then I'm just going to, if when God wants to do it, he's going to do it. Well, that was not the case because Paul said, you got to wage war with those prophecies. Well, if it was in stone, it was just going to happen. Why would Paul tell Timothy to do something about it? Because it's by faith in the New Testament. Why? Because it's Christ in us. We're all part of it. So I don't depend, I don't depend on the prophet to perform what God is saying. And I don't go back to a prophet and say it didn't happen. Because you should have looked in the mirror and said it didn't happen because the person in the mirror didn't do anything about it. God spoke it. Come on now. The responsibility is on us. So what has happened is we have let the devil beat us up with the disease of the week. And next week, it'll be another Greek alphabet and another animal from Noah's Ark. This week, monkey. It might be alien next week. I don't know. Giraffe. It's already been bird and swine and mad cow. And... They need the animals to obtain gain of function. Because you can't kill a human being with these things. Is everybody listening to me? And am I still on? Did they knock me off yet? I am I'm so well behaved. I've been on for years because I just keep my mouth shut. But you know what? People think I'm just Mr. Rogers and I don't know anything. <laughs> and they think you're Mr. They did think that you just like just a, 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 one of those Christians, you know, they don't know a thing, you know. It's like, you're smart. You can see the things that are happening in this country. 
You can see what the next step is. Backing out of the cave, get the car ready. <laughs> Anybody in a black suit, grab them. If any men in black come in, okay. All, all this kidding aside, not really, but the reality is, is that the spirit is the spirit of truth, but that word in Greek is the spirit of reality. So the spirit actually brings reality because he is reality. The spirit of reality brings you into all reality. That's the literal translation. So truth is reality. Facts are observed, but they are not truth because science is based on facts because science is based on observation. So Pluto was a planet and then he got kicked out and now I guess he's coming back in. But poor Pluto doesn't even have a day in court. He's just out there doing his circular thing. It's like, you know, am I a planet today or not? All observation. Okay, so you take all these facts, you line them up, and you're not stupid, and you can figure out what's next. So the day that they overturned, did you see what passed? There was a gun law passed. Okay, so now how many of you saw that? How many of you just really realized what's going on? You see, you have to watch everything. The bottom line is God owns the game. He owns the game pieces. It's his game. It's his game pieces. He always wins. Okay, are you engaged with what he's doing? Because it's by the Spirit. Okay, so this, this, this draws me into the next thing that the Spirit wants. This is really fun, actually. This is, I've been waiting to do this. I had to break up the rocks last night and this morning. I had to destroy all the, all the sacred cows. We're going to get some grills. We're going to have lots of hamburgers. You know. <laughs> but all of you just want the truth. Well, the truth is not facts. OK, so at one point, certain age groups are not going to get this. And now everybody's got to have, you know, but now everybody, but it was only this, per, it was only, now it's everybody, OK? So what is it? You're the professionals. So not knowing the dosage, I just took a bunch of Psalms 91 every day. <laughs> because I didn't know, I didn't know like, is it three milliliters? Is it like this arm or that arm? You gotta remember, the same people were passing out crack pipes. Boy, am I in trouble. <laughs> Backing out. Back out. No, I'm just asking for a friend. I'm asking all these questions for somebody that needs to know. Okay, so if, if you see something in the air and you don't know what it is and the Air Force doesn't know what it is and they say nothing here, just keep moving. I mean, you're smart enough to know like, well, that, if you don't know what that is and we pay you to protect our airspace, then we want someone else because we're paying for you to explain these things and protect our airspace. If you can't do it, then please step aside. Okay? Now that sounds like just simple logic. But see, they think you're sitting on your back porch with your tea and your hound dog playing a banjo. They think you're that stupid. Not that that's bad to play a banjo or sit on your back porch. Or, I see. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that, pe that they stereotype people. They do not want you to discern and act with truth. You get it? And they don't want your children growing up and knowing the truth. Because if that happens, it's like, no, we're not going to do that this way. This is the way we're going to do it. And so you, f you see, dominion has to be something about God's kingdom, not a machine that cheats.
It's just a shell game. When are you going to go into your prayer closet and say, I'm not coming out until I get this? Because that is what everyone that I have talked to, everyone that's ever done anything for God, they hated them in their generation and now they celebrate them as heroes. But they wanted to kill them when they were alive. But every one of these people, they got a hold of God and they didn't let go. Why? Because they wanted the truth. And it costs to get the truth because you got to pull from the other realm. Now, the truth is there on the, in the Bible. But by the Spirit, the thing that is not happening in churches is the spiritual environment is not enough to where people can yank stuff in to this realm. Because you want it through the drive through A click of a mouse... Amazon two-hour delivery. You want it quickly. You want it cheaply. But I, the blood of Jesus is speaking at the at the right there at the throne, that mercy seat. I mean, the Father's sitting on the mercy seat, the real one, not the replica that Moses had. The real one in heaven is really big, and the blood of Jesus is right on between those cherubim. But they're real cherubim up there. And that blood is speaking to the Father constantly. And when your name is mentioned, Jesus reached, he leans over and said, they're one of ours. And the Father looks down at that blood of his Son. And our file is expunged. which means it doesn't exist anymore. Which means if you mention anything about your case, the judge will not know what you're talking about because it's expunged, the file is gone. That's the case. When Jesus told me, he said, you're gonna rule and reign. No, everybody's listening, right? Everybody's listening to me right now. You're all looking at me, okay? Okay, now listen to me. Jesus told me, you are gonna rule and reign with me shoulder to shoulder in eternity. Because I looked down and he had robed me in my future robe, which was Black Hills gold. It was rose gold. It was a oriental robe. From the neck down to the floor, it was rose gold material. It was all gold. I had at least seven or eight stripes. I have four stripes here. I had seven or eight. I had countries and territories for patches that I was over. When he said that, you're going to rule and reign with me for shoulder to shoulder, which means partnership for eternity. I looked into his eyes because I was only a couple feet away and he did not know that I had ever sinned. Ever sinned. There was no file for him to look up to see what I had done. There was, he had no knowledge of anything I had ever done wrong. Ever. The case against you is closed. It doesn't exist anymore in heaven. And I have to tell you this so that we can go into tonight, is that you have to release yourself from the past. Because God literally, he didn't cover it. He wiped it away. We didn't sit around and talk about my past up there. There was none. When you concentrate on these things, you will not tolerate what's happening around you. You're going to do something about it. Why? Because you know that the reason you're here is to glorify God. And glorifying God is manifestation. You are the manifest sons of God.
not just sons of God, you're manifest sons of God. That means you show out because he shows out through you and displays his glory through the church. So I suspect from now on, on my watch, I mean, I'm just a small portion of what's going on on the earth. But I got a chance to come back and do it right. How many people get to do it right a second time? So instead of wondering how I do what I do, wonder why you aren't doing what I do. Ask why you're not doing it. Because do you need to die and go and meet him and then be sent back to get what we already should know? It's embarrassing to me that I had to die and come back to find out what I should have known on my coffee table and in six other places in my house and on all my digital devices. It's always been there. And you know, you know me, I still see things in the Word of God I've never seen before. And that's the way it's going to be forever. There's all these facets of our Father and from every angle, you're going to see something new all the time forever. It's never going to be complete. You're going to be complete, but he is unfathomable. There is no way you can know the Father except through Jesus Christ. And he spoon feeds us in comparison to what's available. So did you do your assignment? Did you read Psalms 29? Okay. All right. Do you see now why, if you want... If you want to know what blood type I am, it's 29. <laughs> Inside my blood is our Father God that when he speaks, the cedars split. That the oceans don't go any further than what he says they go. And he is the one in command, and I am not. And I can't impress you. I cannot do anything to make you like me more. So I give up. This is what I do. I do what I'm sent to do, just like you're going to do what you're sent to do. There are plenty of people out there that they hear the gospel because you fed them. Because you were nice when no one else is, they hear that. I got an award at Southwest Airlines. The president, Herb Kelher, gave me an award, the president's award, which people that have been there for 30, 40 years have never gotten it. And, and I got... I, I got a call from the headquarters, give us a call back. And I never did because I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> so the vice president of the company said, you're not in trouble. Please call me back, dude. <laughs> he goes, are you? So I called him back and this is what he said, are you sitting down? I go, I can be. <laughs> he said, you just got the president's award from Herb Keller. Okay, so this was back, years back. Okay, so they gave me a huge check, an award, and gave a ceremony. And on the plaque, it said this, because you showed up for work on time, you were kind, and you adopted the vision of Southwest Airlines, Herb Keller awards you the President's Award for your ability to lead and be a leader and to set by example and to be the spirit of Southwest Airlines every day. And I'm thinking, I'm just a Christian. That's what Christians do. They're kind, they show up for work. You know, I'm thinking like, this is just like, isn't that funny? And I got an award for it. <laughs> I'm, because it's rare. Okay, so I, we, were, we prayed over the check. And I wanted to sew it because this is hilarious to me. Everything that happens to me is hilarious. It's so full of joy, because there's no way that I'm this good. And I know it, and so I'm not gonna hide it. I'm not this good. So we sewed that check, because I didn't feel like it's really mine. I feel like God did that. So what we did is we sewed it. I, what I did was, I, I said, I'm gonna do something for kids. And this is back years ago, so like, uh, I've been there 18 years at the time, and um, I retired at 30. So, and it's been another five since I've retired. So this is many years. What I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought all this material and I built a jet simulator. And this is years and years ago. And I fully operational and 
I said, Lord, now I want to minister to kids. And I'm just a boy sturtis. And I ran into him. A mechanic came on the airplane to fix our airplane, and we were grounded in Phoenix. And um, he said, I was talking to him, and I, I said, well, you know, I was asking questions like, well, what's wrong with it? You know, how are you going to fix it? And he's like, are you really a flight attendant? Because they don't want to ask these kind of questions. I go, well, you know, I, I kind of told him my story about the Lord. And he just like took to that, that head mechanic. And he said, you know what? Um, we can use your simulator. He said, what if I came up at Christmas? We have a big party at Southwest Airlines. Everybody flies into Phoenix. It's a big hangar where you can put six or seven airplanes in it. We had this big party where we invite all the kids. We have F-16s fly in and the pilots that, that work in the National Guard, they have their F-16 and they, they fly for Southwest. They're gonna fly and do air show and the kids are gonna be able to look at the F-16s. Then all of these different um, uh, things are gonna happen, all these venues for the kids. It's gonna be a Christmas party. How about if we bring your simulator and then you can just up as a jet pilot and just stand there and put the kids in there and just train them and just give them a few minutes. Would you do that? I go, yeah. See, I had to build the thing first. Okay, so Kathy and I would go, and I'd, be, I'd get um, uh, pilots donated their, their military outfits to me and the helmets. And um, Oh, that's right. I do have another helmet with a... We, we're set. Anyway, we'll talk later. <laughs> <laughs> so we're also, we're also implementing a jet fighter into the whole kids program. Not that they're going to get to fly it, but, you know. Anyway, the, 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 the idea was bring this down and be part of this. So they came and got it every year. And then Kathy and I went down and I stood there and we had a line of 400 kids wrapped around the hangar and they weren't even paying attention to the F-16, the real thing. They wanted to go in that and they would just light up. And my bosses would bring their kids and stand in line for hours And that is why you see what you see now, is because I sowed a seed into that. And now we have many of these all over the place. And every city we, we, have, we have simulated. And that's why we started this, is because this was in my heart. And it's going to get bigger and bigger. I'm looking for a cargo airplane so I can fly food places. If Lester Summerall can do it, I can do it. We're actually going to fly a C-130 in a simulator. So it starts right now in this afternoon session, it starts right now is who's in your life that is actually helping you grow spiritually? And those are the people that you need to have in your life. And you need to find people. They may be family members. They may not be. They may be in your church. They may not be. But there it has been a separation come within the church. So it's becoming apparent because of the effectiveness or lack thereof. See, so it's all about the results. What is really going on in your life and what brings results in your life? So if you submit to God and you resist the devil, you push him back. You, you submit to God and you resist the devil, he will flee from you. If he's not fleeing from you, then you haven't done the first two steps. Okay, it's that way with everything. Who is a boat anchor in your life? Are you holding on to them in your soul when you're supposed to cut them off? Okay, you, you don't have to do anything except cut them off. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to be mean to them. 
You don't have to do anything. You just have to decide that they shouldn't have this type of power over you. Is there anybody listening to me right now? They cannot have this witch, that's witchcraft. I mean, I, there's people, they look at me and they have control over me. And when I felt that, I go, why am I afraid of them? I've done nothing but help them. Wrong spirit. Why don't I like you? Well, you ought to ask these questions. Now, if your devils are upset when you're around a man of God, well, that's different. <laughs> but if you're free and you get upset or they get upset when you're around them, you ought to ask yourself, well, what's really going on here? Because it's supposed to be a fellowship. You're supposed to be one in the spirit. And so I was supposed to teach this chapter based on Babylon and babble. So I'll mention it so then I can say that I did it. <laughs> okay, so here's the chapter that I was supposed to teach on, talking about Babel and talking about Babylon and talking about why Babel, why Babylon, why tongues, why no tongues, why languages, no languages, why one and then a whole bunch. These are all questions that can be easily answered when you look at the whole plan of God. You have to ask, well, why did the Lord have to do some of the things he had to do? Well, it was because of our will. It was because we blew through the barriers and he had to destroy the earth. And he had to confuse our languages. It's not God's perfect will that we all speak different languages. Did you know that? Did you know it's not? I mean, we used to have one continent. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. We, we no, don't, please, but. But you have all of these perfect things that God made, and you're judging God now by a broken world, and you haven't, re you haven't gone back to the original intent of what God had. For, and you look at why he made the Garden of Eden. He made the Garden of Eden for man. He created the earth for man. This is all stuff you're going to learn in heaven, but I thought I'd tell you now. You're going to learn all this and you're going to freak out because you're going to say, why did I waste my time? I should have gotten over myself. I'm telling you, this is the biggest thing. I, I thought you'd want to know what I went through when I was there. What I went through was things that weren't spoken. It's what I knew without it being spoken. And I thought, you've got to be kidding me. He said, yeah, we had a meeting and we decided to make man in our image, but in order for man to be in our image, we have to give him a free will, which means a liability that is not going to go well, because man cannot be God, but they're made in the likeness, but they have a free will like we do, but they will not be able to choose good all the time. They will be tempted. We're not. So Jesus said, well, I'll go back and I'll be a sacrifice to demonstrate the love that we have for them. So this was all planned because Jesus was slain from the foundation of the earth, from the world. OK, all of these things, all the good works that we're to do, Paul said, were already in Christ. They were predestined. All the good works were predestined. Now, you're not predestined because you still have the ability to go to hell or to heaven. So predestination is wrong when you get into Calvinism. But what predestination in Paul's view was, listen, God did all this and then he made man. But you can't comprehend all that. But he wrote books about you and they're in heaven already before he breathed you into your mother's womb. So he created the earth because they said, let us make man. They, they, they did it the opposite of what you think. Okay, and this is hidden by Jesus' sayings, he said, listen, we didn't make the Sabbath and then create man to obey the Sabbath. And, and the same with the tithe. He didn't like create the tithe and say, okay, we got to make a man to obey it now. No, the tithe is to help you. I know that's a hot subject right now, 
but it's always been a hot subject. You want to know why? Because there's nowhere in the Bible, I'll tell you why it's a hot subject and why it's contested, because there's nowhere in the Bible except in that place, in Malachi, yeah. Malachi 3, 3.10. There is no place in the Bible, I checked it out with multiple scholars, there is no other place where the Lord says, test me. Test me in this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. You don't have to rebuke him. He will be rebuked by the Lord. There's no place in the Bible where God said, test me in this and see if. There's no other place. Okay. So, where else can you get that kind of guarantee? Now, when you get to heaven, you're going to see that the 10th was never yours. But, you know, I can't say that down here because everybody gets upset, so I won't say it. The 10th was never yours. It was a test. Moving on, moving on, moving on. The tithe was to unhook you from the world system. Listen, every state takes 10% and you don't argue at the cash register. I've never seen anybody argue, I'm not paying that 10%. But you argue about it with God. But they take it from you and more and you just let it happen. I'm just telling you the truth. Love it or hate it, but I'm telling you, you wouldn't have the 90 if it wasn't for the 10. The 90 you have is because of the 10. That was never yours, that's God's. The tree in the garden of the knowledge of good and evil, that was God's tithe. That was his tree. It was never yours. That was God's tithe. That was his. He put it there. And no one was to touch it. Why? Because he's God. Why was it put there? Because Adam and Eve needed to know that they were not God. Because they were so close to being God that they could actually think they were God. So they had to have some sort of barrier to remind them that they are an image they're a replica, but they are not the original. God can know evil and choose good. If we know evil, we can't choose good. We will be tempted. We will be seduced. We are weaker. Are, are you getting this? So when, the, when man was never supposed to know evil, we were never supposed to know the things we know. Okay, so getting back to this, when you're in heaven, you're going to see this that the Lord created the tithe to unhook you from the world system, to keep you free from being hooked. It kept you unhooked by relying on him. It has nothing to do with what you think because that was never your money or your return on anything. Now, if you don't believe in the 10%, we'll just do 20. <laughs> just pick a number. Because I want you to get why God does this. He created the Sabbath because we would work seven days and die early. He did that to help man. That's my whole point here. Is everything he does is to help you. He created the earth. For a man, he didn't need the earth. I don't know if you get that or not. Everything was because of man. Everything. He gave them dominion so that they could rule and reign and be in partnership. When Adam and Eve sold it out to Satan, he became the God of this world. I mean, if you want to bring Paul into it. He said that everyone that is not in Christ is subject to the spirit of the air, the prince of the power of the air. And it says that, he, that they, 
that you, even you, that he's dressing the Ephesians, the Colossians, he's saying even you had no resistance to that power of that spirit. You would do its bidding without resistance, but now you've been translated or transferred into the kingdom. And now you can stand up against it. Why? Because God unhooked you from that domain. The debt system of the world keeps you entrapped. The health system keeps you entrapped. It's not really health. It keeps you hooked so that you never really get well. I mean, have you all been living in a cave? You, you know this, right? I mean, you, you, I know, I'm just joking with you all, but you all know, why won't we talk about these things? I can put, I put money in my bank in my hometown. And I go to Germany and I go to an ATM and that money I put in there comes out of that ATM in Germany. And all I need is my access code. The banks know where I am. When I was in France, I, went, I was in Switzerland, but we couldn't get a hotel to do the venue because the United Nations was meeting there in Geneva. So we had to go to France just to get a hotel. So we were going back and forth across the border. My wife was shopping. She got me a nice suit. And at the same time, I'm trying to pay my payroll to my employees. And because my wife was making a transaction and I was making a transaction at the same time, they, they, they locked everything up. So I called them all on the phone. And the reason I'm telling you this is, is they can't fix your body, but they know exactly where you are and they can make a money appear out of anywhere. Or they can make it disappear. Especially like Starbucks, you go there, money disappears. Okay, so they said, well, where are you, Mr. Zaid? I, I said, well, you know where I'm at. <laughs> I, I, got, I got upset. I said, I need, to pay my, my pay, I need to pay my employees. I'm in France. I'm in this town, and you know that I'm there. Yeah, but we just had a transaction at this store. Do you know this? Well, I go, yeah, that's my wife. I go, you know, you issued her a card, too. There's silence. You know what? You know, before, before I could get, it went on for two hours. And I kid you not. It went on for two hours. Over what they, they already know. I said, do you, so that finally I got somebody that I felt like might have at least half a brain. Okay. And I, I, I said, do you see how many zeros are on the balance there for our account? I said, if you don't take care of this, I will go to another bank tomorrow. We'll take care of this, Mr. Zayda. I'm serious. That's what happened. Okay, so they knew where I was. They knew where my wife was. They knew everything about me. Okay, so why is it that when I pray in the Spirit, I get, I get N-A-C? So I go to Amazon, and they're selling it, and it fights certain Greek alphabet stuff. It says it. Okay, so I go and order it, and man, I didn't participate in a lot of things. I just decided that I'm not gonna participate in certain things. Okay, so how could it be that I'm praying and I get it happens to us all the time. We're praying in the spirit. We start interpreting in our tongues. And we go to Amazon and we take this stuff. And, and then we get other words. It's like we look, look it up in the Greek. It's like, oh, my gosh. The spirit gave us a Greek word. And then we just like, I read a whole book on it. Okay, how can you deny what I'm giving you right now? How can you deny it? It's interesting. The Lord said, by a case of it. No, I could give you other, other stuff that I buy. <coughs> but then you would buy it all and then Amazon wouldn't have it left and then I wouldn't get mine. So. <laughs> this was so powerful. At AC is so powerful. You know what happened, right? I bought a case. I told my staff to buy a case. You know what happened? It came out in the news 
that this is now labeled by, you know, as a drug, and they took it off the shelves. Well, the reason they took it off the shelves is because it's more powerful without a prescription, which means I'm unhooked from the system. Am I right? Have I said anything that's not true? Right? What else does the Spirit want to say to you? Can he walk you into your healing? Of course he can. But he's going to walk you in truth. He's not going to walk you through facts. You know, it's not going to stop at every sign that has a fact about you have this, you have this. This is where you're, you're going to die. You're going to, this is what's going to happen. Will you believe this? You got six months to live. Will you believe this? Three months to live. Okay, how about a year? No, none of that. And you know, you've heard the story of what happened to me. My wife, I, I mean, I, I, I was walking, a walking miracle when I came back. It was a struggle because of the anesthesia. It took me years to get back on track health-wise because literally Jesus told me I had died. They didn't have me on monitors because now people die of this operation because of the anesthesia. So now they monitor your heart, they monitor everything. Back then, you just got in a, in a it was just a surgery, and it was a day surgery, and they didn't monitor. So literally, I expired, and Jesus was right there and took me for 45 minutes. But you know, when I came back, I mean, I could tell you that I died because of the way my body, my, it took years. I'm still, think about it, that happened in 92. I'm still not 100%. What I saw on the other side was a lot of what you call conspiracy is actually true. But I can't say that, so I won't. I was surprised that the dinosaurs weren't on the ark, that they were destroyed because they were hibernized. Satan was wanting to get off his belly, trying to reverse the curse. But sorry, Satan, you don't reverse the curse. You will be on your belly. Moving on, I can see this was going over well. No, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, do you, do you, ever, do you ever ask why Barney, what, Barney the, the dinosaur wasn't on the ark? You know he wasn't on the ark. You know he wasn't. He doesn't get along with anybody. <laughs> Everything is a meal to him. Why is the, the meaning of dinosaur, dinosaurus, why is that translated terrible lizard? Check it out. It's on the internet. It has to be true. <laughs> okay, so that's that's... See, you don't ask questions. But the Spirit wants to lead you into all truth. So you have to be in a receiving mode and learning mode. Okay, so in this room right now, the angels, getting back to the angels an hour ago, the angels are sent to minister for you. So now that we've done this hour of talking and we've discussed some things, and you realize that when you get to heaven, you're going to see some things that you need to know now. And it's going to create an effectiveness that's going to be off the charts. And people are going to wonder, like, what happened to you? Well, you're just in the know now. Okay, so you're in the know. M angels look at you as being their boss. But you're not their boss now. Because it is not... It is not apparent yet because we have not been revealed. Okay, so now we have a lower body. We have a different type of body. We will get a glorified body. They have a different type of body, but they don't get another body. They, ha they, they have their, they, they're, they're created by God. They don't have gender. They can't reproduce. They were created for specific tasks. They don't identify with you like you think they do because they weren't made to do that they were made to do tasks for their god 
That's all they know. They, they listen to every word that comes out of his mouth and they do his bidding. They hearken unto his voice. They're flames of fire and they are on it because they want to please God. That is all they're made for. They have tasks. They are not attached to you emotionally because they're military. So they're sent to minister for you. They end up having to clean up your mess. They end up ministering to you. But this is not the perfect will of God. Sorry. I believe that I will not be such a disappointment going forward. But angels are sent to do the Lord's bidding. And you are supposed to be saying the Lord's bidding. So when angels, this is what I've been told. I mean, I was told. When we hear, they said, Kevin, when we hear our Father speaking through you, we hearken unto it. They know if you're speaking by the Spirit. Okay, so I know, I know right now that if I lined all of you up and I prayed over each one of you in the power of God and prophesied over you, I could do it. I've done it before. It takes hours. It would be days here. Because some of you are a mess. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. If I did that, if I did that, you would receive an impartation and it would be like a memorial that you got a word and that you were prayed over and you felt the power of God. However, the most effective thing really that could happen after that has nothing to do with me ever again because I've done my part. And what happened was is I was doing that and then people were not doing their part. So the angels were left with empty pages in the journal because they, they, they actually write and they take notes and they go back to the Father and they report. But it has to coincide with what's written about you. And if it doesn't, they're working constantly to get you to a place where you get into repentance and you get into obedience and you start to adopt and work with God by his spirit. So their whole goal is really to minister for those who are going to inherit salvation or minister with them. And they, when they come, they, they end up having to do all this other stuff because you're not ready. You're not operating in it. And I feel like if angels could say something to you, they would tell you, please work with us. Do your part and be ready for we want to take you to different regions and meet different people and say and speak different things. That's why we go to all these profane monuments and then take communion and pray. And we take that land back. And then that's it. We're done. So we pull out and it might be, you know, a year later. And then all of a sudden, you know, things just happen, you know. But it's not us. It was the fact that God needed us to bind or loose on the earth. And then the angels have permission to minister for us. Right, is anybody getting this? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to receive resistance in the spirit if you start to go in the direction that I'm talking about, where you start to look at your value and your purpose on the earth as being the fact that God created this earth for us. Everything was planned around us. The earth is ours. It's the Lord's. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. But he did give it to man. If you look, he gave us dominion over everything. When you look at the list that he told Adam and Eve and Noah again, when he had to repeat it again because of a mishap of, be, of being hibernized down here, that we had dominion over everything. So what happened? The prince of the power of the air had to find a way to ensnare all of us and get us to be slaves. So the founding fathers in this country, they discerned the fact that people left to themselves 
in leadership will become corrupt. So they had to create all of these checks and balances so that even the, the most vile creep couldn't take away your freedom and your value. But we have, let, as a country, we have actually exceeded by several years. We're getting to that place, that 250-year mark. We, we've actually exceeded a lot of countries in staying in there longer than most do because of the world system. If you look at, most countries don't last like they, we have. But we had the Mayflower Compact, which was a covenant of 31 people that gave this country to God, you know. And please don't write me about the Indians. I totally understand that, but please, they were here. Yes, they were, but don't write me. That digital ink is, can be used in other ways. There's a lot of digital ink being wasted these days. Listen, the spirit is willing. So let your yes be yes and let your no be no, and the angels are going to be happy with you. If you're floating, if you're anchored in the harbor, singing Kumbaya with a three-string banjo, two of them, three of them are broken, whatever, four, how many there are. If you're just surviving, the angels want you to step it up because they know where your provision is. They know, they know exactly how to implement you into the kingdom. But they want you to work with them. You will be over the angels that serve you now. But it's not apparent because all creation is groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. So we're not, we're not revealed yet. So angels are coming and they don't even understand everything about salvation and about us or anything. They just know that God favors man above anything else. Okay. So narrow it down from now on. Make your, make your mission a three by five card instead of like a 12 volume set of drama. Let's narrow it down to a one three by five card which says that you were God breathed. Your destiny was set before you were born. You will return to the same spot that God breathed you out into your mother's womb. You will return to that spot and you will give an account for your life. Let's just narrow it down and make it simple. Something that a child could understand, because that's what Jesus said about the kingdom. You all are entering in because you take it as a child. Let's make it a three by five card. Then I don't have to read your 12 volume set. Okay, so if I pray over you and I prophesy over you, what I'm gonna tell you is beyond what you think could ever happen. Because I'm finding something out about the spirit. Are you all listening to me? I'm finding out something about the Spirit. He doesn't want you to stay where you are. So he's going to talk where you're going, which is beyond your comprehension. Can you accept the fact that your dreams aren't dead? Can you accept the fact that you're not finished and you're not done? Do you know, like Brother Hagin in class, he said, back in the 40s, they said, oh, you know, this is the last generation. This whole generation of kids is going to the dogs or to the horses or whatever it was at the time, you know. And in his spirit, he, he refused to believe that. He said, no, no, not if I have anything to do with it. And he preached, and he wasn't even that big. He wasn't well known, but he just kept preaching, and he did that for years and years and years and years and years. because he chose not to give up. I came to his school. There were 2,200 people in my class, in, my, in, my, in the school at the time, 2,200. So I thought, you know what? 
I was asked, what do you, I was asked by a man, I go, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I, I just, the only thing I'm called to do is write books, start a school, and do TV. And do, and do seminars like this, spirit schools. That's all I'm called to do. He goes, okay, that's what you're going to do then. Okay, so I started a school three and a half years ago. So Brother Hagen had 2,200 people in his school. We have 28,000. Do you think he's jealous? No. He's saying, Jesus, the word works. That's what he's saying right now, the word works. But see, because he didn't give up, he got me. But see, because I didn't give up, I got you. And it just keeps on going. It keeps on going until it's time. It keeps on going until it's time. And when it's time, it's time. You're not in on that group. You're not in on that meeting. You weren't in on the meeting when they planned your life. You didn't get invited to your own planning. You didn't have anything to say about that. God wrote your book. He's the one. All right, so I'm gonna, uh, I'll give, I'm gonna give it over to Kathy. We're gonna have, we're gonna have prayer school now. I'm gonna ha actually have bath school. I'm going to get a bath, but she's gonna stay and teach you how to pray. I'm, I'm, yeah, amen. But just in case I haven't offended everybody, I wanna tell you this. I saw in heaven that money is actually earmarked for a plan and a purpose, even though money is not part of heaven. There's no printing presses up there. There's no Federal Reserve. There's nothing like that. There, 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 there's, not, there's nothing up there like down here. But I wanted to tell you something, that the money supply down here is sufficient. It's just in the wrong hands. And the people that have the, that the most money control the most. Okay, that is part of the demonic system of Satan. So you have to accept this, is that it's a debt system, and it's, it's so that you never get out of debt. It is the same way with your health. It's made so that you never quite get well because they always need you as a permanent customer. You need to be a return customer. So they don't want you to get well, and they do not want you to get out of debt. If you get out of debt, oh my God, I hear full of power of God. If you get out of debt, you're unhooked from the system, and then they can't manipulate you. It's the same way with your health. If God moves in your life to the point where you receive healing and you start to manifest the healing, and then you, this is what a narcissist hates, when you don't need him or her, when you don't need a narcissist, when you don't need Satan. He's a narcissist. He was the first. Just like Nimrod was the first Mason. And he is the Antichrist spirit. And he is Mystery Babylon. He ran. He ran east to the Ur of the Chaldees and became Gilgamesh. And so now you see this G on this symbol. And you wonder what it is. It's Nimrod who became Gilgamesh. He was a Hagaborum, one of the mighty ones. He was a hybrid. He was a giant. He was a hunter of men. He was the first Mason. Oh, I got plenty more. I just want to make sure I've offended everybody here. <laughs> the mystery Babylon is still in place. So it doesn't matter what color your state is. It has to do with this system, Mystery Babylon. It has to do with Nimrod and Gilgamesh. So, your language was confused. And we were split apart because... God said, if we don't stop them, anything they imagine, they will be able to do. God said, let us go down 
and confuse them, or their hearts are set on evil and anything they imagine they'll be able to do. Their hearts are set on evil and anything they imagine they will be able to do. So their doctrine, their belief system was wrong, but their unity was pristine. So God had to stop the unity. Okay, so now the body of Christ, we have the day of Pentecost. And the curse of Babylon was reversed on the day of, ba- of, of Pentecost. We now all speak the same language in the spirit. We all have one language now in the spirit. We all pray in the spirit. We're all praying according to the will of God. We've all been united. So now listen to this. We have the right belief system because our hearts that were stony are now flesh and they've been made new. We have the heart of God inside of us now. So now we have the belief system. We have faith. We have truth. So Satan knows how God destroyed him. He ruined the unity. God ruined Satan's unity by dispersing them through language. So now the curse is reversed. Now we are being fought in the area of unity because Satan knows if we believe and agree on anything, we will get it. Anything we imagine we'll be able to have. God had to come down off his throne and stop man because They had the ability to imagine something and get it. Am I I saying anything wrong? Have I offended everyone yet? Okay, I'll keep on going. No, I got to get my word. Listen to me. Satan fears unity because he knows if we all start showing up and getting together like this all the time and building each other up and then praying like you're going to do with my wife, You start praying for nations. You start praying for governments. You start praying for people that fall off their bicycles. And you pray for them that they don't fall up the stairs anymore. That they start walking right. And stop inventing words that don't exist. And just, so what's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. God is displaying to you, in front of you, what it's like to be outside of Jesus Christ. He's showing you what it's like to have lawlessness and injustice. Are you grieved enough yet to pray? Are you grieved enough to do something? Because the angels are asking, when are you going to engage us? Because I know my angels, they're like, Yeah, we got a green light on the target. (laughs) Go or no go. Take the shot. Take the shot. I'm telling you by the Spirit, that's what the Lord is saying. Take the shot. It's your opportunity to change history right now. Now, you need to be involved with people that pray. People that can get a hold of God and that are having the manifestation of the Spirit. Now, even though you, have, you know as much as you know about my situation, I still, I still log in with Billy Brim every week, and I pray with her. That's something you can do. I have, we play everything that Brother Hagen has. We play it all the time. He's, he's teaching in our house right now. I told his daughter that. He's right in our house right now. He's the guest speaker every day. But when he prays in the spirit and he's doing these prayer meetings, we play those all the time. And we, we, you could see us. We just, we just walk around the house in a, in a loop. We call it a prayer loop. We call it a prayer loop. Our house is, is big. Don't worry about it. I bought it before I became a minister. So we pray in tongues and we pass each other and we wave at each other and we're just praying in tongues. We do that for hours. Brother Hagen's in there. Yes, Lord. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. China? Okay. And 
you get into that flow, and you can get into that flow with people that are doing that right now, like Billy Brim. They're doing that per call. You get in there and you hook up. Hope we can get on now that I said that. Now you all are going to run on, get kicked off. <laughs> flow. You don't have to do this on your own. Do you want to see a change? I'm telling you, things are going to change because we're going to start praying out the mysteries. We're going to be prophetic. And here's, here's my wife, Kathy, and she doesn't know, but she's going to be teaching on prophetic prayer. I haven't told her yet, but she's going to be, maybe you should tell her after I leave. Prophetic prayer, where you pray in the spirit and then you say in English something, then you go back to praying in the spirit, and then you say something in English and everybody agrees, okay? And pretty much, I tell Satan all the time, oh, we're not going to have it that way. No, we're not going to do that. We're not doing that. No, we're not going to have it. Not on my watch. People are going to stay on their bicycles, and they're going to talk right, and they're going to lead this country. We're going to get people in there that want to follow God. We're going to do the Lord's bidding. And the only reason that this has not happened is because the church has not used her authority. Brother Hagin told us, I checked it out. I asked Billy Brim, and she said, yep, he did say that. Brother Hagin said, if Jesus appeared to him and said, if anything bad happens to America, it's the church's fault. Okay, I asked her, and she said, yep, he did say that. Okay, so Paul said, Timothy, listen, you've got to wage war with those prophecies I received. So obviously they hadn't come to pass yet, or he wouldn't have mentioned it. Okay, so Timothy's like, Paul, your words didn't come to pass. I know Timothy's probably thinking, well, when are they going to come to pass? Because Paul said it. Nobody in here does that, right? <laughs> Putting it back on Paul. Well, how do you think Jeremiah feels when he said about Jerusalem and Israel? He said, listen, I have good plans for you, saith the Lord. Plans for you to prosper and an expected end. Sounds like it's rigged. Okay? So Jesus comes, ministers for three and a half years. And right before he's delivered up to be crucified, he stands probably on the Mount of Olives and looks over Jerusalem. He says, oh, Jerusalem, how I've longed to gather you as a hen gathers her chicks. But you wouldn't have it. You didn't discern your day of visitation. And he prophesied the opposite of what Jeremiah said. He said, there won't be one stone left on another. What happened in 70 AD? It wasn't what Jeremiah said. I think right now you understand the prophetic a little bit better, don't you? So, Timothy's sitting there and he's thinking about, okay, Paul just corrected me about that. So I got to take these words and I got to repeat them out loud so that the angels engage me and you think you're reminding God, but you're not. You're manifesting the word through your mouth because you are the authority on this earth. Okay? So Timothy's thinking, okay, wow. It's hard being a young pastor. That Paul, he's really hard on me. He's thinking, okay, wait a minute. You know, I remember when he laid hands on me and there was a fire. And it's like, now I can't even cook a hamburger on that fire. So Paul writes me and says, hey, you know that gift that I, you got by the laying on of hands through me? He said, you got to fan that in the flame. Okay, well, if it was fire from the altar and it was given by an apostle, don't you think it should at least last a little bit past its shelf life? Why did it diminish? There is no shelf life. I'm joking. You all are so serious. <laughs> Why did it have to be fanned in the flame? Because left unattended, that's what happens. Paul, once again, speaking by the Spirit, he pronounces words over people, he lays hands on people, and gifts are given. Laying on hands, people receive the Holy Spirit. Okay, why did Timothy have to do something about it? Because Paul had done what he was supposed to do. 
And now it's up to him. It's up to Timothy. Fan it into flame. So when there's a little more fanning going on, I'm going to do a lot more prophesying for people. But the Lord's shutting it down. He said, you have nothing to confirm, Kevin. They're not getting anything from me themselves. So you're not going to tell them anything. because There's nothing to confirm. And then I realized that the prophet's ministry was to confirm. Imagine that. Has it come back to that already? You are supposed to hear from God. The prophet is supposed to confirm. And if there's nothing to confirm, then there's nothing to be said because you need to get a word from God. But you don't need to get it from a prophet. You are a priest and a king of the Most High God. All right, we're going to meet back here at 6. We're going to worship until we can't walk out of here anymore. Kathy's going to come and teach prayer. At 6, we're going to start worshiping. And then we got a whole bunch of, of really cool things we're going to do tonight with the kids and prophecy and praying for people. And we're going to, we're going to manifest. We're going to be manifestations. The Spirit's saying some things. Amen. Ready? Okay, got to do precious. All right, here's Kathy. Hello, everybody. Hey, I just want to tell you what we're going to do in here. We are going to pray out everything the Lord needs prayed out today. Okay? He's going to help us do that. But if you need to stand up, stretch a little bit. Get the blood flowing. You don't have to stay standing. I just wanted to let you have a stand before we press back in for a little bit. So God is so good, and he is really helping us out. And it's um, so glad you're all here for prayer school. So go ahead, and you're welcome to sit back down. I just wanted to let you do that. You know, sometimes you just need to stretch a little bit and <laughs> say hi to your neighbor. And... Um, <clears throat> But, you know, Kevin said we're going to pray prophetically. And what's so cool about praying prophetically is when you're praying prophetically, you're like under the radar. The enemy, that's why he hates the prophetic. Hello, everybody, friendly people. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. We love you all. And, you know, like Kevin said, we would love to like hug all your necks and it doesn't always work out. So don't ever take it personal. We just know that the best thing we can do is just, you know, get the word out there, you know, and get you all to where you're the ones doing what we're doing, you know? And so the Lord kept, I, so I just wanted to touch on this because the Lord's really kept hitting on this this afternoon about the tithe. So why does the enemy not want us to tithe? Because he knows if we don't tithe, the devourer won't be rebuked. He does not want to be rebuked by the Lord himself. The Lord says, I will, when you bring the tithes into the storehouse, he says, I will rebuke the devourer. So of course he doesn't want us to tithe. What's 10%? My goodness. It's all his anyhow, you know, but there's that one section that's the tithe. And then you go into offerings. If you start giving offerings and you start getting into that flow like Isaac was in, where he sowed in famine and he reaped a hundredfold. If we ever start to think, get the revelation of what a hundredfold is and start to operate in that in every area of our lives, 
our children's 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 children won't be able to exhaust what has been set in motion. That's, we have got to not limit God. In Psalm 78, it talks about how they limited the Holy One when they drew back. So we're not going to be those who draw back in the day of battle, but we're going to go forward. And so tongues is another thing. The enemy doesn't want us to pray in tongues because he doesn't know what we're saying. We're praying out the mysteries and we're talking to God. We're building ourselves up on our most holy faith. And so that's why he doesn't want us to tithe or pray in tongues, the two T's. <laughs> so they're just like things the Lord has given us. They're tools to help us walk out in the kingdom what he needs walked out at this time in history. So like Kevin said, we're going to pray prophetically. So what that means is we're not going to be praying in our mind the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So prophecy is always going to testify of Jesus. So we're going to get in a flow, and we are going to, we're going to really get her done today. Not by might or power, but by his spirit. Because he really has something he wants prayed out today, in this place, in this region, in this point in history by all of us. And all of our faith. And so... He says to examine, now before we go into prayer, he says, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Okay, it's not like a rebuke, but he's just saying we need to check up sometimes. Are we even in faith? Do we believe that when we pray in other tongues that it's the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity praying with our spirit through us? Do we believe that, that the angels are going to hearken to the voice of the words we speak today? They're just waiting to hear our faith-filled words, whether it's in tongues or whether it's in English, but it's by revelation. The enemy can't. That's, that's what's beautiful about the revelation realm. Because <laughs> it's like free flow and you know that you know that you know. And that's what my prayer is for all of us today is that what do you do when you don't know what to pray? You just pray. You just prime the pump. And you get the oil flowing. You fan that flame. Like um, it talks about in the Bible when there was a plague that broke out. God was mad at the people. And Moses and Aaron, they prayed, and Moses told Aaron, take a coal from the fire and take the censer and run through the camp. So I want you to think about that when we're praying, that you're like the coal, praying in tongues is like having a coal from the fire on your tongue, and you're praying out what the Lord wants. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So there's that fire, and it's going to cleanse our lives when we pray in tongues, and it's going to cleanse the camp, whatever the camp might be. It might be your family. It might be your nation. Okay? So are you all good? Okay, so um, let's just go in and begin to pray in the Spirit a little bit. I'm just going to open this up in prayer in English so we can all be in agreement. But um, there is a spirit of faith. And there is a spirit, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we're, uh, we welcome that spirit of faith. You know, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Okay, so if you find that your faith level is low, you can just read the scriptures. Just open like your favorite chapter and just start to read it. And then something will like be illuminated to you and just say, that's mine. Now that's praying prophetically. Like when a scripture jumps off the page at you, Take that one and pray it out. That's prophetically. That one's become revelation to you. Or another way to get back in faith is sometimes you need to repent. You know, sometimes like Kevin had the perfect example. Are you driving down the freeway at 55 with your brakes on? Well, if you need to repent of something or if you've been speaking words that are opposite to what God says, then you are driving down the road at 55 with the brakes on. And the way you get the brakes off is you repent. You can say, Lord, I repent of wrong words, deeds, or actions. I, re I repent of doubt and unbelief. And I say yes to you. And then whew, your drive's going to be a lot better. It's going to be a lot easier on your brakes. <laughs> so, and then praying in the spirit, praying in other tongues, says he, when we pray in other tongues, we build ourselves up on our most holy faith and we keep ourselves in the love of God. So 
I used to train horses. And one of the things in training horses is it's not people think, uh, they call it centered riding. It's not just your reins or your legs or your voice. There's also staying in the center of the horse. So that's what we want to do with the Lord. And when you're centered riding, if that horse makes a quick move, if you're in the center, if he makes a quick move, you're already like, you know, you're going to move with him. You're not going to be caught off guard. And so that's what staying in faith does. That's what walking in love does. It keeps you in position. So you're not going to be caught off guard. Okay. So we're going to pray. And um, yeah, I'm going to open us up in just sort of like a little house cleaning prayer. Okay. Just Father, we just thank you for your love for us, and we desire, we know that you have things you want prayed out today, and we know it's not by might or power, but it's by your spirit. So we examine ourselves, Lord, and we just repent of any doubt, unbelief, any wrong words, deeds, or actions, and we just uh, say yes to you. We say yes to godliness, yes to you. Yes, 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 yes to what you want prayed out, Lord. Yes to a revelation. Yes to the angels working with us, confirming your word with signs and wonders. Thank you that you work with us, confirming your word with signs and wonders. And the angels hearken to the voice of your word. We pray for doors of utterance, Lord. And I pray for all of us in here that we would even go to new places, that we'd have take us into new two realms in prayer, Lord. Hashu Lakita, let's just enter in. Shalamat, just begin to pray in other tongues. If you don't pray in other tongues, just ask the Lord to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and just begin to speak. It's a free gift. It's the Holy Spirit's already come. Just like Jesus, salvation's a free gift. The price is already paid. Uh, Baptism in the Holy Spirit is for every believer, every born-again Christian. Shama tumokurra mama sukurrama sumondo burraba so tokur ravase o ravas te kira vasto o reveve veje jeje o ravava vusokurra mama se. We pray what you say. We pray your way. Bashe, 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 bashe. Today is the day. 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 Shukuto, mashama, shamondo, ramaste, istave, esave, esave, sutoko, ramase, sopoto, shabate. So when I'm praying in English, that means I'm hearing something in my spirit and I'm praying it out and then we can all agree with it. So I'm hearing the Lord say, today is the day. So we're agreeing, today is the day. Today is the day. Today, not tomorrow. Today is the day of victory. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. Today is the day of healing and baptism in the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that it's today. It's today. We repent of limiting you. It's not afar off. It's today. It's today. It's today. Victory is today. Overthrow is today. Help from heaven is today. Shama tamanda bogorra mande barabusa mongorra masama somondo borrebe de shebe eshe ebeshe eshe. It's not far away. You're not far away. You're here. You're here. You're here. Shave, shave. Your fire. Your fire. Your fondo. Stamvende, bastondo, rambande. Tongues of fire. Habasho. Abasho, tongues of fire, baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire, 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 show, fire, fire, ushate. Put your hands on your belly and say, more Lord, more Lord, holy fire, baptism in the Holy Spirit and fire, tongues of fire. Tongues of fire, I loose my tongue, I loose my tongue, I pray in other tongues now. 
Bosha bala bidia borra baba busa mongorra mamande borra baba buso orra baba bubuso korra baba bubushte borra mama masa mongorra mama shtbe atikia bate ilaviara correve shekeve 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 o vorra vasorra 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 eshta nongorre eshta nongorre eshta nongorre Eshtan angore, eshtan angore, ishtan engete, ita keteke, ita keteke, pick up your pace and finish your race, pick up your pace and finish your race. Je, there's much grace, there's much grace, you're well able, you're well able, thank you Lord, we're well able, we're well able. Hamata Mongoro, we're well able to pray out everything you need prayed out today. We thank you, Lord. Shabbate, your strength, your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Shamata Mokorra Mamama Sumorra Mamama Sukurra Babase. Orra Basa Korra Basa Korra Basa Korra Basa Korra Basa. Orra Basha Keria Sakile Etele Etele. I motomo orramate ears to hear eyes to see borramande boso korra babase we see you high and lifted up we see you high and lifted up all glory all honor unto your name Jesus Jesus Christ in us the hope of glory Jesus Christ in us the hope of glory Shomo Tama Namakita Mokoro Busande Gilaviara Gorro Gilavagorra Vekito Gorreve Kia Bacaso Borreve de Bista Mangande Oramata Manga Labusto Orababuso. Thank you for the supply of the Spirit that each one in here supplies, Lord. Each one of us has a supply of the Spirit. Your supply mixed with my supply, all of our supplies, agreeing for all of God's heart accomplished today in this prayer meeting, in this prayer school. We're learning how to flow together, together. Shave, shave, unity in the spirit. Shomoto mongorra, ista. Praying in other tongues is a wonderful way to get on the same page. Shokor rababa bose, it's Jehobodiaste, or Rama Samande show, or Reba la Bushamande, Kelevidia, Barabodor, Rabadisa Cornoto, Ombor Mamasa Mongor, Ramanesha Mangala Bokor Rabate, Alevete, Alevete, a spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, in the knowledge of you. We ask for it and we receive it. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the knowledge of you, the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, strengthened with all might and power in our inner man. Moria bay, Moria bay, Moria bay, Brestanikida Bashte, Orababa Busto, Orababa Busto, Ustonondo. We we break all distractions, all hindrances in Jesus' name. Be broken. Mrate, 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 mrodo bronde kabase, epo tabrande brista nongore, ibalabuda bada he he he, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, shovo rava shava shava shoko rama shama tama somo tomo. Ambala bari adi ala korra bari ato korra baba busto korra baba buste orra baba baba to korra baba deeper still deeper still dig again the wells Maria Mande Maria Mande Maria Mande ah through the Spirit we mortify the deeds of the flesh through the Spirit we mortify the deeds of the flesh. Through the Spirit, we mortify the deeds of the flesh. Right now, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith. You are overflow, overthrowing your flesh. Your mind, we speak, command our minds to be quiet. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Tell your soul to be still. Be still, my soul. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Ah, sonongo ramamasa mande beria borra babaso. 
or bababush nakaya natu kuramakate, or rashe, or rashe. Raise your hand if you're doing okay. Okay, everybody okay? Good, because we're just going to keep going. We're building up our endurance, okay? Shamalamondo borrama se kiriavo so. Brashte, 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 brashte. Brashte, 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 brashte. Havaluto, havaluto. Evelekete, evelekete. Eleavekite, ushtovoshte, ushtovoshte. Just so you know, the Lord's very happy that we're working together with him. He's very happy. He's very happy. He's very happy. He's very happy. He's very, very happy. The Lord is very happy. The Lord is very happy. We're laying our agenda down and we're letting him speak out his sound. Shamata, we thank you for your sound, Lord. Shamoteme, your sound. Ushtonoto. Ushtenoto, Ushtenoto. Jesus made himself of no reputation. What are you so worried about? Shavo, Shavo, Shavo. In all things, Lord, you have preeminence. In all things, Lord, you have preeminence. Mashe, Mashe, Mashe. Jesus, the name above every name. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare Jesus Christ Lord over our nation. We declare Jesus Christ Lord over the seat of the presidency in our nation. We bind purity to the seat of the presidency in our nation. We declare justice and right prevail. Justice and right prevail in acceleration of justice and righteousness. Shano Romoso La Pa La Pute La Puto La Pete Mokoro Matepe Orapa Epete Orapa Epete Ipono Itano. Right now, Lord, we pray for pastors, pastors. Pastors, pastors, hoshne, mercy, mercy on the pastors, Lord. Encouragement, come to the pastors now. Mande la mando, pastors after your own heart, Lord. Mande koro, we call them forward, we call them forward. Pastors after your own heart. Ora bababuse, ora bababuste, ora babaste. Let the prophet speak. Let the prophet speak. Increase of prophetic release. Mande Samondo U supernatural pastoring. Supernatural pastoring. Sheve, Sheve, she live again, live again, live again, live again, live again, live again, live again. Raba Sudo Gorra Mande Bese Osto Bira Mande Bira Mande. Be Ramande, be Ramande Kila Manda Borramande Besamonda Borrabada Busa Corra Basakete, Orra Baba Bushe, 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 Namaste, 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 Word of God prevail. Word of God prevail. Your word, O oh Lord, is settled forever in heaven. Your word is settled forever in heaven, O oh Lord. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled forever in heaven. For Vuta, Vaveshe, Vaveshe, Vushe, your plan will stand. Your plan will stand. We believe it will be even as it was told us. Even as it was told us. Even as it was told us. Mashalave te kiriato. Or Buste, or Buste, or Buste, Uriavia Tequiete. And we set ourselves in agreement with what the Holy Spirit is saying through us. We agree, we agree, we agree, we agree. Mashande, Ishtondo. Okay, are you guys still doing okay? We're, we're just now sort of getting in there. Okay, so it takes a while sometimes to get your body to be quiet and your mind to be still. 
but pretty soon some of you are already there, but you're going to just going to feel your spirit just take over. And it's just, that's what prayer school is for is just breaking us through into a new place. Cause the Lord really needs us to be praying out what he needs prayed out at this hour in time. So here we go. Just checking in with you. Okay. Shakor so kude she ushananande keshto or rababa busonongo rababa shekeriato or raviaria socorra sikite o natananda de shenondo ma sheke ma shekeriando corra masse or rababa socorra vasekete or ravasa corra vasekese. Okay, y'all pray real loud. Thanks, Kevin. Need a hand twist. Thank you. Thank you. Borravia sukuna mateni kirian degese. O ridi vidia shokorra vaso toso, O kisa ne kiria sonondo, Ediasto, istananke, stekiriasto, O reve veve se, O reve veve se, O reve ve se ke, O reve ve se ke. You know, it's very humbling to pray in tongues together. We kind of have to get over ourselves, you know. It's kind of like the more we do it together, it'll get, we'll just kind of jump in a lot faster. But it's a very humbling thing. You know, you're like, you're letting the Holy Spirit pray through you. It's, it's very, it's intimate with the Lord. So it's okay. You, you kind of, it's like going down the runway in an airplane, praying in tongues is a little bit that eventually you just kind of break free from gravity and you're soaring. And you're really getting some stuff done. So corra masekia no coso. Orre bebe beche. Orre bebe bebeche. Orre bebe bebeche. Orre bebe bebeche. Irianda girianando doste. High spiritual realms. High spiritual realms. High spiritual realms. High spiritual realms. That was he, that's what he has for us. Undetected. High spiritual realms. High spiritual realms. Everything taken care of all at once. Everything taken care of all at once. Your families, your nation, your jobs, Mosheme, Mosheme, and the kingdom of God advancing. The kingdom of God advancing. Brene Keshe, the kingdom of God is advancing. Brono Samande Boshemo Korama Samande Bosondo Corroso. What wouldn't move, moves. What wouldn't move, moves. What wouldn't move, moves. Moves, moves, bash nakande be, be thou removed, be thou removed. What wouldn't heal, heals. What wouldn't heal, heals. What wouldn't restore is restored. What wouldn't restore is restored. Restoration, restoration, restoration of marriages, restoration of relationships, restoration of marriages, restoration of ministries, restoration of relationships, restoration of finances, better than if it never happened, better, 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 sevenfold recompense, sevenfold recompense with restoration, sevenfold, mashnehete, mashnehete, etikabe, itakabe, it works in your favor, it's working in your favor, ha, ha, ha. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, shavo she, shavo she, mronde, 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 this is your day. This is the day of victory. This is the day of victory. This is the day of victory. Victory, victory, victory. Vikriti, vraste, vrekeshte, vrekeshte, eshte, eshte. And Jesus went a little further. We can go a little further. Shamo, shamo, shamo.
Shamo, Shamo, Shamatamatiki Amakari Anongoramate, Shamatakambari and Goramande Geriato, Orava Sekiria Sokoto Soto, Orasia Teki Sakaria Sokoto, Rande Shaviando Korrababase, Orababaso Korrabase Keria Sataso, Orababaso Korrababaso, Orababaso Korrababaso, Orababaso Korrababaso, Orababaso Korrababaso, Orabashe, Hi, 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 Orababaso Korrabase, Orraheya Tehe, Orraheya Tehe. Orra hey at a hey, Orra hey at a hey, Orra hey at a hey. E la vianoto. And what I hear the Spirit saying is, Who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine, that would defy the armies of the living God this day, this day, this day, this day? Because we. Covenant. Our God is a covenant-keeping God cut in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The pure, spotless blood of the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world is a covenant that we stand on. We stand in our victory. Dikido Rama. Stand in your victory. Stand in your victory. Stand in your victory. Vreve, 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 vorava, voto, voto, vahaha, 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 voshe, voshe, van. Viande, 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 y la vida viato. Ha, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Now, okay, like Kevin said, I was going to pray prophetically. That what I said, I wasn't planning on saying that about the uncircumcised Philistine, but in the spirit, we got to a place where whatever was like trying to hinder us was like called out and so that was like a prophetic prayer that I just prayed just kind of like saying that's kind of like Kevin was talking about there's like you get in that flow with the spirit and then he gives you a word and then it's not really you it's your spirit and there's just such an ease like we quote quote sister Ruth all the time but she always says there's an ease in the glory and there really is there's such an ease it's like can you feel it's already different there's like a lot of work that we don't need to do right now. We could pretty much ask the Lord for anything. So um, I want to tell you a secret. Well, it's not really a secret, but there's a great book I read years ago called Intimate Friendship with, um, with God. I think it's called by Joy Dawson. And in there, she talked about, you know, and I was just a growing up, I was before I was married, and, you know, you encounter all this different stuff and different trials, and she said in that book, she explained that the Lord, in these different trials, when you, he can trust you in a situation, you know, like whether it's in cert- with relationships or finances, when he sees that he can trust you, this just touched my heart, then... It wasn't so much about the trial or the test or passing the test. It was that he knew he could trust you to come bring you in closer. And I feel like that's what he's saying to us. Like, it's really touching his heart that you guys are all wanting to pray, you know? And he's like, he's feeling like he can bring us in closer, but he's so just. He's not just going to like, you know, hey, come on in, you know, he's, you can maybe, he's just just, and he's like, he knows how far he can bring you and so I think you get what I'm saying. You know, isn't that cool? Yeah, so I just felt like that he's feeling safe with us, you know. So, Father, we just thank you for trusting us to even flow through us and for, to even just to baptize us with your Holy Spirit and fire. And we just, we just wait in your presence here and... um 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Okomoshe. Ora es itave es utane esti. Navlita ma kito koma ashtene kitovo. Evita evele elevut navete. Ashtina kate nosto. Mashte. <laughs> now, that's an example of how quick a work can be done. I went from almost like a groaning travail intercession to a joy. <laughs> now that's what you call a quick work. <laughs> and that's how there's such an ease in the glory. And it's like we don't have to, um, it doesn't always have to be laborious, laborious. You know, it can be easy and even like just um, sometimes singing in the spirit, you know, it'll just carry you. And you, you can just go mile, you can just go like into eternity and back, you know, just singing in the, singing in the spirit. And um, I learned this from, we listened to, so we're good friends with Ruth, Sister Ruth Carniel, okay? And she was assistant to Ruth Heflin, okay? And so Ruth Heflin, they, they were huge intercessors. They had camps, and you can, you can look her up online, Ruth Heflin, and you, even some of uh, YouTubes of her out there. And, um, but what they learned about intercession, and I feel like the Lord's wanting me to share this with all of you, because I know we all just want to be effective. You know, we want to, like, pray out what the Lord needs us to pray out for our families, our neighborhoods, our regions, our jobs, for, you know our world, you know, and they, the Lord taught them that singing in the spirit, that they could get a lot more done in intercession and they wouldn't wear them out, <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, why use an ax if you can use a chainsaw, you know, <laughs> so. Anyhow, so you always be open to that when the, you're praying, and then if the joy comes, or if intercession comes, like, I mean, if just go with it, or another tongue comes, like a sound that you've never, uh, like a new language. Like we all remember when we first, for, the, for, the, for, for, uh, for those of us who are filled with the Spirit, you probably remember when you first got your first few words or, or your first gusher. And then sometimes, though, it talks about, the Bible talks about diversity of tongues, it could happen that to you again. Like on just the other day, I was praying with a, my, one of my prayer partners from Iraq, and we were praying, we were kind of contending for the things of the Lord. You guys are welcome to sit, stand, whatever. It's the whole goal is just to stay in the flow. And um, we were contending for the things of the Lord and even just the gifts of the spirit, you know, it's almost like you know, it, there was, a, it seemed like a few, like, like when I first was first born again, there was a lot more gifts of the spirit, you know, and it's like, we have to kind of contend for those things. So we were contending. And then, so we started, went back into praying in tongues on the phone, my friend from Iraq and I, and I was like, oh my gosh, I could tell her tongue like totally changed. She was like talking in this tongue I'd never heard. And we've been praying for years, like back when Kevin and I were, uh, I've probably been praying with Josie for like 20 years, maybe. Yeah, and she's easily, we used to, draw, I would drop Kevin off at the airport, then I'd meet her and we'd go pray at the um, church. And um, anyhow, her tongue just changed and I never heard her speak in that tongue. She goes, Kathy, did you hear that? My tongue changed. I'm like, yeah. I mean, we, so j I'm just saying like, I'm praying that for you all too, because then if your tongue does change, go with it because it's gonna, there's a reason. Like the Lord's going to be plowing something new or taking care of something new, you know? So those are just different things. So, and yeah, so just, it's just working with him, you know? Thank you, Lord. It's like when I um, trained horses, that you would get, you could get horses to where they were so, you could just put like a little pressure on their neck with the rain and they, it, it just wouldn't take hardly anything. Just kind of sit down in the saddle and they'd stop. You just get like that, this communication with you. And a lot of you are already, this is all just, 
you're real familiar with this, but there's always new places we can go. So I'm just saying, let's not limit him. Like even the seed, so I'm just saying that he's wanting that for us. So we're just so sensitive that, you know, he's saying, pray this way, stop, go. Um, but about the hundredfold. So Isaac sowed in famine and reaped a hundredfold. So think about when you're, like if you guys all have, guys and gals have other things you could be doing. But you've taken time to come here and then to stay for prayer. So to me, like we have friends that are investors and there's certain accounts that are like really high yield account. Like if you put something in that and if it does whatever it's supposed to do, then you get this huge, you know, return on it. Yeah. Well, what about when you really are squeezing the last little bit of what you have out of your schedule to pray in other tongues, which is going to be helping you, but it's also for other people. You know? And so it's a seed you guys are sowing today. And I feel like the Lord wants to, you, me to encourage you to expect a hundredfold return. Because when you're sowing in fam famines, like when it's tight, you know, you're in a tight place, right? So in a sense, some of you, this might be a famine, but you're sowing anyhow. You're sowing of your time into the kingdom of God. So expect exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all you could think, ask, or imagine. Like, we have got to really take the limits off God. We are not just, like, praying to just get by. We're, like, overthrow, table in the presence of our enemies. Yeah. We're talking that supernatural abundance, supernatural finances, supernatural rapid answers to prayers, like before we call, they're already answered. Before you get home, everything's taken care of. Now this is praying prophetically, so we've gotten into a place where I'm just saying some things, and this is normal for us, because we're joint heirs, we're part of the family, we're part of the business, we're not the servants, we're joint heirs with Jesus. So he actually wants us to get, I want us all to get used to ruling and reigning to where he says, concerning the works of my hands, command ye me. So when we see darkness coming and we say, proceed no further. He that troubles you will bear his own shame. Okay, Jesus is the victor. You know that song that uh, he wears the victor's crown? I love that. I think Darlene checks things it or something, but I love that. You wear the victor's crown. He wears the victor's crown. But think about this. We are seated with him. So even though there's times in prayer where you're contending for stuff, always check in to make sure you're seeing yourself seated with him. Wearing your victor's crown. He's made us victors. You know, we aren't him, but we, he has decided to, like, let us be seated with him in heavenly places. You know, and he's a man. So forever there's a man. Have you ever thought about that? Someone, I heard this recent, somebody, it just hit me, like, between the eyes. Forever there's a man in the Trinity. And we're in him. So it's pretty sealed up pretty tight. Yeah, and I just pray, Lord, give us that revelation, what you did for us, Lord. Open our eyes. Such a huge price he paid. But man, did he ever seal it up. <laughs> he sealed the deal, man. He sealed it. It's tight. It's tight, and it's right, and it's full of life. It's in the blood of Jesus, pure, spotless blood. And there ain't no sin that is powerful enough to negate the blood of Jesus. Any sin that ever has been sinned or will be sinned, the blood of Jesus goes deeper still, deeper still, deeper still deeper still. 
So we're going to command the harvest to come in. So let's all stand. Let's use our authority. Just as I was saying that, I was seeing that, you know, that's what the blood was about. You know, he, there's a song that says, um, sons and daughters are going to be born again today. I don't know the rest of the words, but it's a church we were visiting, and they were singing that, and I was like, that is so cool. They sang that before the service, and the words in the song were, sons and daughters are going to be born again today. So they were declaring it before the service. So we declare that, Lord, sons and daughters will be born again today all around the world. We thank you, Lord, that you would, we ask you, Lord, you draw the prodigals and the people who have never even heard your name, Lord, draw them into your presence, heal their hearts, grant them the gift of repentance, Lord. We pray for labors into the harvest laborers into the harvest. We call the harvest reaped. We call the harvest reaped. We pray for the body of Christ around the world for unity, 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 unity. All the works of darkness exposed, every hidden thing made manifest. Expose darkness in the body of Christ around the world, Lord. Ishaman, we pray for a cleansing and a healing, a purifying. Glorify, purify your bride, purify your bride. Purity, purity, purity and victory, purity. Pure ma shama no sheme mreshtambande brosto iravare edevuda varavese kuravande elavundo ravashe idave that the works of darkness be exposed and uprooted. Come to naught, come to naught, come to naught. Come to not, Mashtenekete, 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 Ushtenande, Ushtenande. We pray for uh, governmental leaders around the world that you would cause them, Lord, to choose righteousness. Ch cause them to choose righteousness. Cause them to choose righteousness. That the doors of the gospel remain open. The doors of the gospel remain open. The doors of the gospel remain open. More souls, more souls, more salvations. Mashe, mashe, mashe. O shave kete, u shade she. Hey, press in. Let's press in a little bit. Shama tamangari esto. Rababase. Boso, boso, boso. Isan dashe. Kashe, 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 shovo, revelation, Lord, revelation, revelation for your body, revelation for your body. Masikilave teneke sokoro vuste, o ravavia tokora mamase, ho reveviande, ho reveviande, kur reveviate, ho ravavavaso. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the harvest angels, Lord. Thank you for the harvest angels. Thank you for the harvest angels. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest angels. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the harvest angels, Lord. So, ikane amsabushte e tekiero ushte. I'm supposed to encourage you. A friend of ours was a missionary. Uh, he has a church in the States here. But he asked the Lord one time, he was reading in Revelation about the angel that said, um, commanded the Lord about the harvest. And um, I don't have the exact reference, but the story was, so he was, he was ministering at a church, and um, 
he went out under the power. I think the, the guests, the host pastors had prayed for him and his wife or something, and he was out under the power. And when he's out under the power, when he's waking up, he like saw this huge, huge angel. And he looked up and it had like slanted eyes, olive skin, black feather hair. And I think it was making like some sort of guttural sounds, but I think he kind of knew what it was saying. It had teeth and it had a quiver. And he was like, whoa, like, you know, what is this angel? And who is, who are you, you know? And um, the angel said, I am the one you asked about in Revelation. Because he said, who's this angel that would command the Lord? He said, I'm the harvest, I'm a harvest angel. And there's, we go with those who go into the harvest. Isn't that cool? And he was like intense looking. And so there's many more like me is what the angel said. And so... I thought that would encourage you, like even if when you're just out witnessing or, you know, you're praying for the harvest, that there's harvest angels that go with us. Yeah, he said he was kind of, he sounded like he was kind of intense looking, you know, he had black feather hair and eyebrows and anyhow, yeah, I always love that story. So, yeah, praise the Lord. So, um, hallelujah. Let's just thank the Lord. We're just going to kind of come in for a landing here because we're coming back soon and I want to give you all a chance to kind of like unhook and rehook and then we always come back and it's just going to keep getting deeper and stronger and we're going to be able to really learn how to pray what the Lord needs us to pray out together as a group and then you all just keep praying at home in between the conferences or just keep letting that develop that flow and I like these times because it incur I feel like it helps us get dislodged. You know, it's, sometimes it's just a lot easier to pray with other f believers, you know. Sometimes when you're in your house, there's like distractions and things. But this will help us when we go home, just continue that flow. And it's going to increase and get more stronger and more stronger. So, Father, we just thank you so much. Ha shukura veshere as shororo do shtegiria te giria shtokoro shakiria shte ushtokuro shte. We just give you the glory, Lord, for everything that's been prayed out. We thank you for the peace. We set ourselves in agreement with everything that's been prayed out today by the Spirit. <sighs> So the Lord's got it, he's taken it, and um, just thank you for everyone, Lord, who participated today, whether those of us here um, at the conference and also those online, we just cover us all in the blood. We thank you for fruit that remains, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just say this together. I'm blessed coming in. And I'm blessed going out. All righty. We'll see you guys soon. <laughs>